Thursday, June 7th, uh, we'll come to order. Uh, we will, let's do the lot release first because that's going to be very quick. And then we'll move on to the public hearings. Are all three public hearings going to be heard? And nothing is going to be? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Okay, so Wellington Woods is a seven lot subdivision off of Boxford Street. Um, Bob Messina is the developer. He is here tonight. He is at the point of requesting his lots be released from the Form I Covenant. Um, the DPW, Tim Willett, is the operations manager, has submitted the bond spreadsheet. You all have a copy of it. It wasn't included in the packet. We just received this yesterday. So the bond amount totals $65,700 that Bob is prepared to establish in a cash bond um, and release all seven lots at once. The roadways to binder coat and construction has begun on lot one. And the Boxford Street itself has been paved since this project's been approved, so the entranceway has been opened. Bob has additionally requested that the site opening bond be released. Um, again, Tim Willett at the DPW has released the street opening bond that he had established, um, and there's a $10,000 site opening bond. Any uh, comments by members of the board? It looks like this is a pretty detailed list. Yeah. Lynn, you don't have any comments? <laughs> Not on the, um, the back on the lot release is done. And the site opening bond, everything's done on that? The site is open. It's constructed a binder coat. Like I said, Boxford Street itself okay. has been um, paved, so one's binder and one's pavement, but the water lines and all utilities have been brought in. What form are they going to do this bond in? In a cash, cash, cash bond. bond. Still, a, bond yeah. still a cash bond? Yes. Okay. Have you gotten all of the no. documents uh, yet? Um, or? He has the Form J submitted by Christian Sinisergy, and I wouldn't sign that upon receiving the check and a motion to approve the bond, the lot release. Okay. So I don't have him in hand, but he's prepared to deliver him upon a, a, approval. So I think yeah, there's the pieces to the motion are to release the lots, yeah. to accept the bond, presuming it's in good order, yeah. and to re request that you sign sign off on the Form J, yeah. and to release the site opening right. bond. Right, so I'd like that one in a separate motion. Okay, so, we'll do that as yeah. a separate motion. Okay. So does anybody have any questions on this one so would somebody like to make a motion along those lines to uh, I remember the form J thing <laughs> the uh, to release the lots release. accept the uh, bond and instruct the planner to uh, sign the form J if it's a good order I move we release the lots accept the bond accept the bond and Sign the, the form J. Sign the form J. Very good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so motion made. For Wellington Woods. For Wellington, For Wellington Woods. Woods. Yes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the so, second is a motion to release the site opening bond in the amount of $10,000. Okay. I hear a motion so to that effect. Motion made. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Paul, if you can just meet me in the office tomorrow and file yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I would like to do the um, public hearing for uh, DPW first, if we could. Okay. So. Okay, the, the Verizon um, application is just a decision, and you have a copy of that. Yeah, we can okay. do that after. We can, right. uh, there's no need to do that. Uh, but there are people here for the other ones, so. Okay. All right, so um, just a brief overview. Uh, the town of North Andover is seeking a site plan review special permit to make improvements to the public works facility by constructing a 7,000, 7,100 square foot administration office building in front of the existing building and then also replacing the salt shed in the rear of the property with an 8,000 square foot structure. Uh, the project has been sent to the stormwater review consultant and has also been sent for department review. Uh, conservation is hearing the project at the moment and will be first hearing sorry, the project tomorrow and zoning is also reviewing the project for a variance at their hearing on June 28th. 
There are no other reviews at this time to share. Um, and then one point of comment is that there are currently 20 parking spaces plus one handicap space. The proposed parking plan reduces the amount of spaces to nine spaces plus one handicap space. And Ray Santelli, the assistant town manager and the project engineer are here to speak on behalf of the project. Okay. So all yours. Yeah. I was going to say on behalf of the town of Orlando, I'm Ray Santelli, the assistant town manager. With me is John Savasta from CSS Architects. Um, Rebecca took most of my opening statements, so I'm just going to read it anyway, just so I don't lose where I am. Um, the proposed public works improvements consist of construction of a 7,100 square foot administration building in front of the existing building and connecting the two buildings with a small foyer entryway. Uh, the new building will be two levels. Uh, the public entrance is oriented towards Osgood Street with nine visitor public parking spaces located between the building and the street. The town is also intending to clean up and improve the entire parcel. One of the improvements that you have before you tonight is the replacement of the existing salt shed located behind the main building with a new 8,000 square foot structure. Um, the property is intersected on both sides by wetlands. Um, the siting of both the new building and the salt shed is severely constrained by the governing 50 foot no build zone. We're scheduled before the Conservation Commission tomorrow evening. Also, as this is a corner lot, a variance request has been filed with the Board of Appeals for the side setback along Wayne Street for both the administration building and the salt shed. If this wasn't a corner lot, the side setback would be 15 feet, but because it's a, 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 a corner lot, it's a, a 20 foot setback. So we need a, a variance for both the, the main building, which will be 16 feet, seven inches off of Wayne Street, and the salt shed, which is even more constrained by the 50 foot no build, will be about nine feet off of the lot. And we're scheduled for the so CBA on June 28th. Okay. Wayne Street's not constructed. Wayne, Con Street, Wayne Street is an official street. Uh, it's not just a paper street, it's an official street that runs the full length of the property. Um, you know, staff has heard me say that if I uh, poll the entire community of North Andover, 99% of the people would think that that's simply the public works lot. Mm -hmm. But it is, <laughs> but it is an official street. Unfortunately, if you go on the town's GIS system, it doesn't show Wayne Street being there. It, it has the driveway of the high school labeled as Wayne Street, so that throws some people off. But that is an official, non-accepted way. But it is an official street in North Andover, and it runs, like I said, from Osgood Street all the way to uh, the backside of the property of uh, public, public Works. So where the auto body is, that's on the other side of the street. That's Wayne Street, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're, that's at, the, where they're the, at the corner of Osgood and Wayne. Yeah, so, so that's right. That's, that, that, that the side auto part. Body. That's the, correct. The town doesn't own the land on both sides of the paper street. Then. It's not a paper street. It's an official street. So the town does not own the property on both sides of the street, no. Does it? Okay. Okay. Got it. So, you know, to, to, you, one of the questions that we've been facing the last couple of weeks is the parking issue. But again, um, uh, we have a severe wetlands issues on both sides. So we are actually eliminating parking spots and um, asphalt area uh, in the front of the building. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> sort of uh, to the, to the uh, upper part of that building there between uh, the little brook, the building and the little brook. Um, the building is situated, as you can see, the dotted line. It's, it's r the edges of both are right on the edges of, of the 50 foot no build on both sides. Uh, there's a 50 foot no build that, that intersects the property on both sides. Um, so behind the auto body, there's wetland flag shown there. So he's really challenged with distances coming in both those directions. Right. And so the little jog in pulling that towards Wayne Street is an attempt to keep it out of the 50 foot on the upper part and right at the 50 foot on the lower part. Right. Um, so again, nine public par nine visitor park public parking spaces along just one side of, of um, uh, the driveway coming in from Osgood Street. Uh, we anticipate similar that occurs today. Uh, all staff will park, for lack of a better term, on street parking on Wayne Street. Um, this 7,100 square foot building is going to be Strictly for administration uh, office staff, uh, we have no. There is no intent of increasing staff, so it will be the same number of people. That's the same number of vehicles. Um, the existing office space, which is non-conducive, really under today's standards, it's not handicapped accessible. There are some air quality issues. 
Um, over time, uh, the engineering department has slowly creeped and is really built in a loft over the garage area, so you get gas fumes, et cetera. So we have to address all of these uh, immediate needs for our staff. But again, no increase in staff, so um, if you went by there on a regular business day today and see where all the people's cars are parked um, opposite um, the garage entrances on, on the edge of Wayne Street, that's what's going to be um, even under this project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we plan on doing improvements to the entire area. So if you can swing, thank you. So um, the existing salt shed now, we're going to propose a modern salt shed that should be a photo in your package. Um, I did not have a, a large uh, photo of it, but it's pretty much a prefab structure that's about 35 feet tall, which is the height, which is the height uh, limitations in this R4 district. Um, um, trucks will be able to pull right in and dump the salt, and when our trucks have to be loaded, they will pull right in, and uh, um, it will uh, start to enhance the area and part of the cleanup that we intend for that entire parcel. John can answer specific questions about the building and the material and what it's going to be, what the exterior is going to look like. Well, you can see from the photo in front of you what the exterior is going to look like. We also plan to reface the existing building so that it'll match the new building. So in the photo that's before you, okay, we'll bring it up online as well. Yeah, the back, the back side to your right is the existing, is the facade of the existing building. Doesn't really look like that today. Right? Nowhere close to that. <laughs> Nowhere close to that today. I'm sorry, you just made Bruce laugh there, John. <laughs> we used to have our meetings there for a year. <laughs> hey, you were lucky you weren't on the board then. <laughs> if Rebecca, you can bring up a picture of the building, please. So again, this is, this is the new um, uh, jagged uh, two-story building uh, with administrative offices. What you see there is the public entrance. This is actually the view of if you're uh, on Osgood Street, just uh, about over the little brook that's there. So on the right side, that, those windows that you see, that's the, old, that's the existing building where, which will be resurfaced uh, for the part facing Osgood Street to match the new building. Uh, and between the two buildings is a small uh, entryway connecting the buildings. You can see the, the entryway there on the right side. This is more from um, the parking lot of uh, the red, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's the lacrosse or indoor whatever facility. So that's all incremental landscaping that is on the site plan, right? Yeah, and that's going to be part of what we address with conservation tomorrow night because we're getting rid of that's in the wetlands area right there. Right, and this board oversees the stormwater mm -hmm. component of it, and so all of that is part of the stormwater plan um, yeah. that we do not have. It has gone to Eggleston Environmental. We don't have response comments yet, but she's hopeful to get them in time for tomorrow night's meeting. So. And we anticipate okay. being back at your June 21st meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the stormwater piece of it is a little bit complex. It's very busy. Right, and well, I was going to say, given the constraints on the property, yeah. that's got to be the biggest issue here and the most complicated. Yeah. yeah. So. What's the headhouse on the, Rebecca, can you slide up to the first image? I'm sorry? Go back up. Slide on. back up to the first image. It's a small headhouse. Top of the building, John. Well, that's for the elevator. Okay. Yeah, an elevator over the Okay. Where are the mechanicals? Are they on the roof as well? Um, we're trying to keep all the mechanicals off the roof. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you talk about lighting, Greg? Or well, the lighting plan is we submitted a lighting plan that identifies the lumens and the well, lumens are the um, uh, foot candles for the parking lot. Uh, we've also had to put. Uh, they're not showing on the uh, on the rendering, but there are there are lights that are going to be mounted on the side of the building for egress to the public way, um, which are just down lights that are going to be lighting the sidewalk. Um, but for the most part, we met the requirements of the the um, lumens for neighboring um, yeah. sites. I believe there'll be two poles right, in the parking so lot. Yeah. There'll be two additional light poles and yeah. then wall-mounted okay. yeah. down lights off the building. Well, not two additional, just two. There's just going to be two, not two additional. 
I don't know what there is now. I don't think there is, there's there anything now. Right, right. so, so there's just two. going to be right. two. You may have mentioned I might not pay attention to materials uh, in the building. John? Well, what we, what we, we had to come up with a material because of, of two factors. One, uh, we needed a material that was going to be very lightweight because the soil conditions on the site are horrendous. They are bad, so we have to put in, we have to install rigid inclusion columns to hold up the foundation. That's the, the reason for us going with a metal clad building was we looked at, um, we looked at three different materials. We looked at a hardy plank, we looked at a brick, and we looked at a, um, uh, a metal cladding. Um, to give you a name, it's like a Luca Bond is one of the, the names that stands out. And the reason why we went with the Luca Bond because um, two reasons, one of maintenance and the second one, it's a lightweight material. A square foot of brick weighs 40 pounds a square foot. A, four foot, a, a square foot of Luca Bond weighs four pounds a square foot. Um, thus, we don't need to go to deep piles with that. And we don't want to go to deep piles because we didn't want the banging vibration to uh, sort of affect us and then all the neighboring properties. So we're going to go with a rigid inclusion column, which is auger drilled, and then they just pour in a slush into it, and it actually increases the value of the, of the soil. And then the footing goes right on top of that. It's like a regular convention footing for the building. And uh, we go up from that with metal framing and uh, the metal cladding. And again, similar to all of the other projects that are in, under the facilities master plan, this is strictly a dollar-driven project, so we had to take into account where our dollars could be spent and make well, the building. Well, yeah, I, I guess a general observation, and this is a little bit out of scope for, um, for the planning board to some degree, but maybe not, is that I presume this building is going to meet the needs of the DPW for yes. 20 odd years. Uh, not only the DP, not only the public works, but also facilities management, because the facilities management department is in here. So the interior layout, and I believe you have the floor plans also, um, allow for expansion or, or allow for a proper accommodation. Like I said, right now, um, the engineering staff, the two members of the engineering staff, are in a converted loft over one of the garage bays. Um, a lot of the map rooms are on the, are over the, the garage loft. Um, so both the first floor and the second floor will accommodate. Um, uh, in addition, we'll still have some of the space in the existing building to serve as storage, so we don't really have to create storage space in this new building. Okay, okay. fair enough. I, I, I mean, the, maybe this isn't fair, but this building here feels to me it should have been bigger. Uh, you know, it we just you, my you, you, you know you know our process. Our process is we form a working group. We don't have yeah. building committees. We form a working group of the people who are invested in the building are going to be in the building. They are the ones who put the uh, 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 the initial bells and whistles together. Um, the school department, um, although it's expanded more in the last year since they've been here, uh, this building was to accommodate all of their proper expansion plans. Um, this is, I'm trying to remember off the top, 7,500 square feet or somewhere in that yeah. area. I mean, the initial design really called for about a 6,000 6, square foot building. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, we were also constrained at, in this location by the topography. If you remember the old police station, um, uh, the chief was in a basement with no windows, or some of the offices were in the basement with no windows just because of the... The, the configuration, the topography of the of this parcel. So we were a little constrained by that, but um, the school personnel that were involved as part of the working group, um, we actually ended up expanding a little bit of the building than what they originally sought. How high is the building? The building's 25 feet. 25, okay. So you just have two stories. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So... Well, I have one comment, another comment. Who picked the color? <laughs> did, you, did you talk to the selectmen last night? Because they had the same comments. I haven't had a chance to talk well, to the group about the color. Okay. We haven't confirmed the color. Yeah. We just use a color that would respond somewhat what the existing building has, that kind of color, but we haven't really... Which we don't like the existing building, though. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no we... we Again, I haven't had a chance to talk to our team here, but no, last night a couple of selectmen made the same comment. Yeah, the about mustard the color. yellow, yellow yeah. I don't think is. Uh, I'm not sure we'll go with the, gray, the battleship gray that one of them suggested, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it does look like with the smoke clears, we'll have a 
more functional building, the entire site will look a lot nicer too, and the drainage situation will be better. If we get all that, it's not bad. Yep. No, as I said, we're, we're, we're very much uh, fixated on, on doing site improvements regardless of the building. Um, so we'll, you know, part of the drainage, et cetera, but also some severe cleanup of the entire yeah. site, especially on the side and on the back side mm -hmm. of the building. Yeah. And just the salt shed alone will improve the look. Um, and that's going to entail a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, site improvements. Yeah. Okay. Gina and Rebecca, are we okay? Do we know what we It sounds like the drainage stuff is the really It's still building. being reviewed by Lisa, and we haven't received any other department review comments as conservation is still waiting to hear this tomorrow, and I'm still waiting from fire, police, and health. Okay. And as I said, we're and before the ZBA on the 28th for the side setbacks for the two building for the two structures on the Wayne Street side. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, as far as parking, we could include a parking reduction permit as part of the site plan review. Um, we have a new building commissioner that started this week, and so new the inspector of buildings. Inspector of buildings. I apologize. Um, so determining <laughs> <Whatever>. the <laughs> different titles have yeah. different meanings. Um, so determining the use and the required parking. Um, I could sit and meet with him and then draft a narrative. I mean, they're just, there are yeah, not I mean, Again, I'm not wild about have parking in the street, but this is a little bit uh, unusual circumstances. Right. You it, know, I mean, what we today. don't want to have happen is that people feel they're compelled to park out on Osgood Street or around the corner right. or something like that. Yeah. Parking on Osgood Street is never, no one has ever even yeah. been tempted because, again, everybody has the belief that that side is the park, is the yeah. DPW lot. It's why isn't that street accepted? Condition. Just curious. It's not accepted. But why but, hasn't it been accepted? Um, Is it built to street we, acceptance? We 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 just we in in planning this project, we didn't even realize that that was an official street that ran the okay. whole length. Okay. <laughs> so so no one's and, and that's people who have worked there for years. Right. Hello. Hey. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 Okay. I, you know, we're not going to be moving the public works yard. I, yeah. I, I can't create a lot. We're like we're restricted by wetlands and. Uh, no, I just wonder why it didn't get accepted. If it was ever not accepted for a reason. Or, uh, like I yeah, said, I'm sure that 99 yeah. out of 100 people wouldn't even know that's a street. So I don't know if you'd ever right. be able to find an answer to that question. Yeah, the, I mean, the existing condition is that's where they're parking. Yeah. There's not a tremendous yeah. amount of visitors okay. to the yeah. site. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, as long as we don't hour. create a parking problem, okay. I think we'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. So. Good. Terrific. Thank you, and we'll see you in two weeks. Good. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody here to speak to this application? Is there anyone, any public comment? Okay. Sorry, public comment. Yeah, come up here, you know. we'll, 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 we'll let you, we'll give you a seat at the table. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you just give your name and address as well. Yeah. For the right. So my name is Arthur, I live, uh, Marco, so I live at 11 Concord Street, so I uh, have a good view of the garage and how it works. So I got a couple of questions. Um, first, uh, the lighting. Is that going to be planned to be on at night? Uh, because I think currently now the, the parking lot is lit at night and there's also lighting that em emits from the side of the building. Currently all the only lights that exist are on the building itself. Yes. So um, yes, the, the, the parking lots are directed to just the parking lot. So mm -hmm. they're not going to be shining across the street or, or onto the So it's going to be a whole change lighting plan from... Right, got. there'll be two light poles in the parking lot okay. and lights on the front of the new building for the egress, the, the, the public egress. And those are, are those be planned to be on all night or? Uh, yes. Okay. Do we, uh, do we need that? I mean. We well, usually they have cutoff shields. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could probably do similar to what we do at the fire station, but here we probably would have to think about whether it's used for night meetings. I know in, at, at the fire station, um, 
the parking lot lights are shut off at 10, but the building sconces remain on all night long. So we could probably do something similar here, where the, where the two lights, as you see the dots there, the two dark mm -hmm. dots, uh, one at the bottom and one to the right near the, near the Osgood Street entrance. Uh, we could probably set them on, uh, on uh, uh, Timer, timers. No, not timers. And at the fire station, we have them on sensors. Okay. Because that way you don't have to worry about the time changes yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Let's well, also be a, you know, save energy. And yeah, so, so obviously we can do the two parking lot lights on sensors, but leave the building sconces yeah. on. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit, although the plan things in the, on the side, obviously, because there's currently now a strip of, of uh, grass, and that's where that one tree is. Well, right now, there's also parking spaces on that side. Yeah. This is all part of the, the plan that we discussed at, at the uh, Technical Review Committee, as mm -hmm. well as our ongoing <clears throat> discussions with conservation. In order to address the conservation issues, we are, get, what happened? <laughs> we are getting rid of a lot of the, as you see there, um, uh, see right above the word proposed? Those mm -hmm. are existing parking spaces, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're getting rid of all those. Yeah, yeah. So we're putting in plantings, again, to address well, the conservation concerns. Yeah, I'm more concerned about, is there going to be uh, trees now where the existing, is it existing one pole there, right, where, um, the, right where the bollards are, where it says bollards and... A pole? There's, a, there's actually a telephone pole there now. Well, we're not moving the telephone pole. Okay. Yeah, no, the telephone pole's not moving. Yeah. Utility pole. I mean, I, I'm just concerned. I'm seeing that you guys are going to put new trees planted across. Um, we'll put, right. We'll, we'll put something between the parking space and Wayne Street. Yeah, okay. Yes. So there's going to be, be more to like one tree now. So I think there's going to be. Yeah, we'll I, I'm not sure whether we're going to put trees or large bushes or something, but we'll, we're going to put something. Okay. Because, um, again, we're improving the entire site okay. or the look of the site. And then also uh, another question I have is, so you're going to have parking on Wayne Street itself um, for the employees? Same as today. Okay. Um, will those be marked? No. It's just going to be people just parking? Just, it just again, where the word Wayne Street is, is yeah. where people park vertically. Um, when I was there the other day, there were 28 cars there parked <coughs> vertically. That's staff. Yeah, okay. So there won't be like... Like markings. No, because again, yeah. it, it, it's, a it's a street, but it's not a street. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you can't get anywhere from there. The street ends at the end of the property, but it runs the entire length of the property. Okay. So, we're not going to put a dividing line or, or mark parking spaces. No, we have no intention to do that. So, I mean, can you, can you zoom in a little bit more? Like, so. Um, As you can see, Wayne Street runs even beyond yeah. where the existing salt shed is. Um, do you have, do you have, I was going to ask, so, I don't know if I can point to it, but so you're saying employee parking will be right? Parking will be no different than it is today. We don't okay. have any intention of changing. Well, the parking lot is also much bigger now. so that But the employees don't park in the oh, parking lot. Oh, yeah. I know that. Okay. The okay. employees don't park, maybe one or two, but the employees don't park in the parking lot. Okay. Line. So that's going to be strictly visitor public park, parking. Okay. And then um, the, the, and I think the last question I have um, it's just how, how you you were speaking about the color and stuff, and you know when we'll without looking at the color, trust yeah. Me. No, I mean when, I mean <laughs> the same because you know yeah it's yellow it just sticks out and obviously moving there you understand that it's behind me and we 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 will know. be looking at the color. Okay, so you guys can assure you that'll be decided by a let's planning board or selectmen or none that? of the above. Tom manager. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> okay. All right, that's all. That's the only questions I have. And, um, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. And if you <laughs> want to, as we go through this process, you can call the planning office. Oh, yeah, uh, I have called, so, yeah. yeah. So, okay. all right. Okay. Good. I kind of like the yellow. Okay. I'm not sure uh, it's a real yellow, but so okay, I get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you and, all. Uh, uh, as I said, we'll see you in we get weeks. answers, we'll... We should be close to closing up. So, um, you know, I'd like to do, given what we got here, I'd like to do the kettle pizza thing first before we do the um, uh, the other okay. two, uh, the one long public hearing. Um, I think he stepped out. So let me just. Jump. Okay.
just see my office is down 85 degrees in my office. I just no, it just for some reason they can't get the air conditioning building right. So, yeah. so uh, and you're welcome to come sit okay. in the, uh, and hang out with I us here. Really <laughs> pizza time, so. uh, if Gina and Rebecca, if you give us an update on what's happened since. So they, um, the applicant has filed a site plan review waiver. Um, they're proposing to reconnect the access from 125 and widen the access from Bradford Street, improve the loading dock area, and remove some paving and curbing near the loading dock area. Uh, uh, at the first public meeting, there was an issue with the entryway, which had been since addressed with the new proposal. At the second meeting, there was public concern from abutters concerning truck noise, street traffic, and intersection at Bradford Street and 125. At the request of the board, we held a site visit on May 25th. DPW was unable to attend. However, they stated that there, were no, there was no proposed activity in this area. Um, Lieutenant Gray was able to attend from the police department. Um, some summary of the site visit. Um, you have the um, actual summary in your packets, but just a couple of points is that uh, the police have noticed that the accidents have primarily been in the evening and as a result of traffic on 125, not necessarily Bradford Street. Uh, the North Andover Police Department is willing to install a speed signal to help track data and make drivers aware of the speed limit and or increase patrol in that area. And their one suggestion is that rather than limit a no right hand turn for commercial vehicles, they would suggest maybe a wait and see type of approach because it is a public way and it's very um, unlikely that you could restrict access for UPS yep. and FedEx yep. trucks. Um, we did leave voice messages for a couple of the abutters. Um, we just looked up phone numbers and tried, but there weren't any abutters at the site. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we, I think we went actually far beyond what was reasonable to accommodate people in this case. I feel like it was good that we did it, yeah. uh, but you know, at least in my view, I think the applicants demonstrated that what they're doing is going to have a minimal, if any, effect. And I think we had a process that was very similar to site plan review. So from, you know, my personal view, I'm perfectly okay with waiving this. I don't know what everybody else thinks. I agree. Um, I completely agree. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, there's a few things that we should have as conditions, but... Well, we'll write something up. I think uh, you provided the draft, right? Yeah. Do they have it in the packet? Well, I think it's, given that this is a waiver, I'm perfectly okay, okay. we make the motion that we waive site primary view uh, subject to the note that the, uh, the, the planner prepares. Okay. And just circulate it to everybody, and if we have to add it, we have it. But it just goes into the files, really. Right. You know, so, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to waive site plan review for 1755 Osgood Street, Cat Pizza, subject to the interim town planner um, providing a written decision circulated to the board. Second. Okay, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Okay, okay. thank you very you. much, everyone. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate your patience no and willing to work with us on this. And, you know, obviously, I think what you're going to do is going to be fairly benign, and I suspect that people won't know, won't even acknowledge it. But I think if you continue to sort of be the good neighbor you are, sure. I think you, you'll work no, that's, out well with them. That's so. certainly where we want. So, yeah. uh, and we'll certainly let you know when they open houses. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Okay, let's. Uh, the Verizon one, we don't. Let's hold that over because all we have to do there is a decision. We don't. There's nobody waiting on that, yes. is there? Yes. Oh, there is. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so what do we? What do we? I, 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 there's no more comment. Um, all the review is complete. We've drafted the decision. If you want to go through it. Okay. Let us do that. Yep. Then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where is the? This is. Yes, that's the decision. Okay. Uh, first thing is, can somebody make a motion to close the public hearing for this one? Move we close the public hearing on uh, Soco Partnership DBA Verizon Wireless. Okay. 
Cloud radio access antennas, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, let's go look at the decision here. Decision. Yeah, the header usually has. Doesn't the header usually uh, include like special permanent subject yeah. or something? Yep. You could. Yeah. I can add that. Yeah, that's fine. Not a big deal. You have to find something. <laughs> Pre-existent? Isn't it pre-existing? Is there such a word as pre-existent? I don't think so. That's we said to the angry don't. Pre-existent. It's pre-existent. Okay. Just makes sense. What page you on, Laura? It goes through waivers. It's it's a few it's a bunch of times. Okay. Right now, it's in our bylaw that way. Is it? Yes, the bold text is copied. <laughs> we can look it up. If it if it isn't a word, we'll we'll change it. Yes. It's a shocking outrage. <laughs> what? <laughs> Special uh, petition to. It is just like non-existent. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like pre-recording. I mean, it's it's the past tense. Uh -huh. It's a duplicate of the same thing. <laughs> okay. It's, okay. If if it's not Laura, we will change it. We could just say existing. Okay. Uh, we can Google it in the time we're talking about. It. <laughs> okay. It's, in, it's on Merriam Webster. Okay. okay. Yes. Good job, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Does this require any further approval by the Board of Selectmen? No, if you remember, they initially came in for a discussion with us. You advised them to go to the Board of Selectmen. Um, they deferred it back to planning, and they're, if I remember correctly, their biggest concern was making sure the abutters were notified. Yeah. Um, and I think all added together, this came to close to 700 abutters. Um, yeah. John, this came up when I met the mayor and uh, uh, Rosemary, yeah, today, and um, Mayor wanted to be sure that none of the locations were on Main Street. They both had some concern that these things would be clustered in the downtown area, and I don't think they really are. 
No, I talked about right. it briefly last night. So sorry. since then, yeah. I, yeah. I'm not sure when that meeting was, but when they provided, initially, again, back when we very first heard about this, they were talking about those areas that seemed like it would be dense, dense areas, and we envisioned library area, maybe downtown. They subsequently provided bipolar locations, and there were more Great Con Road, Dale yeah, Street, yeah, places right. where people Because that's tend, where the hills are. Right, where people yeah, tend to lose so. service and dips. Yeah. Okay. The other concern that Miller had was that when he described what he has, I think, seen is a panel on the bottom of the pole about the size of a refrigerator. Now, that isn't what I saw in, uh, in Innsbruck. It's not. You have the specs. It's not okay. nearly the okay. a real small refrigerator. I wouldn't buy one. Um, so, yeah, the, you, like the, the specs for this equipment, but yeah. now that I look at almost every pole I pass, there seems to be other equipment that I just wasn't aware of at the time, but there are the kind of manila colored boxes right. today on poles. I said I would bring those up. Yep, yeah. no. Nope. Uh, does each of these need a building permit? Yes. Okay. And I believe an electrical permit. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, the one thing the applicant had talked about and we never, I don't think, finalized, he said he had mentioned about painting them to match the pole color and we never went any further with that on whether we wanted it or not. That was, you know, I wasn't at the I, I don't know. That's yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if we wanted it or not. It looked nice yeah. in Amesbury because you couldn't tell the difference between the pole and the... And the canister itself or the equipment? Mounted on the pole. Just the canister Just itself. The canister. Yeah. I care. So what was displayed was a grayish color yeah. canister, and is that what you envision putting? Yeah, out? if you want, I can okay. jump in and address the question. Mm -hmm. um, we. My name is Chris Winiarski. Okay. This is a close. I guess we closed it, so it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I'm Go just ahead. answering questions. Um, Chris Winiarski, attorney for Verizon Wireless. We don't have a problem painting these. Um, I, I do this all over Massachusetts, as I mentioned, and I've, I've seen all types of telecommunications facilities that we've been um, required to paint. It doesn't look good. Um, these were specifically designed to look like the type of equipment that is on poles right now. Um, the idea is to be hiding in plain sight. So, like I guess it paint. It's not a big deal. It doesn't cost us any money. It doesn't cost us any time. We don't have a problem doing that, but uh, more times than not, when we do paint something, um, the general consensus afterwards is that we shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my thinking is leave it up to, you know, it's like maybe do one just to see whether it looks good or not. As long as it's not the one in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I, I think I don't want to over-engineer these things. Is is really what it comes down to. So, yeah. okay, what's everybody's pleasure? Would somebody like to? Is everybody done? Would somebody like to make a motion? Somebody's going to make a motion. Move we approve the uh, special permit for uh, Verizon Wireless. Verizon Wireless or Selco Partnership DBA Verizon Wireless. Karen McLean and Milton. Okay, and so motion made. Uh, second. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and second. Uh, and that's as, as amended because there were some minor amended. changes. Yeah. So, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we are now on to 1600 Osgood Street, Osgood Solar. Uh, can we get a overview of where we are on this one? Um. So the application has been sent for a department review. DPW has responded that they have no comments at the current time. Conservation is waiting to comment until stormwater review has been submitted. 
Fire has stated that they've been in touch with the applicant and are working with the applicant to tweak the design to allow adequate fire access and also make sure that there's adequate hydrant support. Uh, no other department comments have been received thus far. Initial stormwater review was submitted late yesterday and civil review performed by TEC was received just today. The applicant was sent both of the reviews, however, they haven't had a chance to respond. A draft, uh, well, the, the submitted comments from both civil and stormwater have been included in your packet at the hard copy form. Um, and then just an overview, um, the applicant submitted their application on May 6th with plans to erect 3.6 megawatt Brown Mountain Solid on property on the north, west, and south of the building. The application submitted site plans considered demolition of existing structures in section C, as you can see over in this location, and relocate nets and demolish the existing structure over here where the cursor is. And as you can see next to E behind G. And add a solar array on top of crushed drone, uh, crushed drone and erect an array in section G. And then at the first discussion with the board, the applicant decided not to demolish the structure behind G next to E and relocate the proposed panels that were gonna be in this area over to location G. And then today- and That yeah. was contemplated as maybe a phase two approach that that demolition area um, would probably take a significant so amount of time. when we had the preview, Yep after the application was filed. Is what we're gonna to see tonight the same as that or different? It is not. No, because the applicant today stated that they will not be demolishing the structure in C and will not be relocating next. So they are here to present that, so we received so that. So what the, it's in the application, what we're seeing tonight is different than what's in the application. It is. Do any of the uh, reviews that we have reflect what's going they on They have tonight? not been made aware of this, so we were just told this afternoon. Um, and I have not seen it presented, okay. so Dan is here to, to show that. Um, but we're just showing the progression. So when it was submitted initially, it contemplated the demo to demo. If you look at G and just go to the left. And since then, when the site plan was filed, so when we did receive it, that kind of turned into a phase two approach and what was contemplated to be arrays in that location have been moved to the G location. Um, and like I said, late today, the demolition piece in C, which we, again, at the pre-hearing discussion, we're gonna pull that demolition maybe out of site plan review. However, the reconstruction of that area would, was to remain in site plan review. So that's what went to the peer reviews for both civil and stormwater. And um, Dan can speak tonight okay. to what he's so, proposing. I mean, so the May 6 plans, disregard them? Well, the, the May 6 application, no, but the May 6 plans that we have, those are not the most current plans now, um, correct? The, okay, the site, just want to make sure mom. The, well, the site plans didn't get filed with the May 6. They came in just after the okay. conference no, that Just you had. dated May 6, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they came in June 2nd. So okay. I think what we will need to do is have the applicant, uh, applicant explain exactly what they're proposing to do because yep. what they're proposing to do, we've not heard about it all yet. So. Right. so the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Leary with Osgood Solar. Um, be, be, before I get started, there was just one administrative question we had was, um, I think this is traditionally the time of year where there, there could be turnover with the boards of their ERIT. Any anticipated uh, changes going to be uh, happening in the next couple of meetings? I ask the uh, board of selectmen and the town manager that. We okay. don't appoint ourselves. Fair enough. So. Uh, are there any terms that are expiring? Yes. And do you know the the last date of the term? What? June 30th? Okay. Yeah, I think June 30th. Okay, so just Dave and June 30th. And everybody's seated so an alternate could hear. Everybody's currently seated on the board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what you asked me. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay, good night. No. Okay. Just wanted to no, no, no. Let's let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, so, to, in order to present a lot of information as succinctly as, as humanly possible, I put together um, uh, probably about a ten or twelve minute um, just overview, 
and the outline you're receiving now is just a, a, a general outline of everything we'll discuss. So it's hopefully listed there, your uh, topics of your questions. And um, thanks for being patient while I get, get through this quick presentation. And I'll have, have some further handouts to, to pass around as we get close to them. So the, the first, uh, to start this off, is just a general site uh, plan overview. We've dramatically simplified and streamlined the design of the project to account for the comments we heard over the past year from town boards and officials, uh, the need to maintain options and flexibility for the, pro for the prosperous future of the property, and the urgency, uh, as I explained last meeting, of the expeditious permitting process in order to have our system online by the end of the year. Um, there are approximately 10,300 solar panels to be located uh, to the north and west parking lots, as you can see on that plan. Um, the this is a ballasted roof mounting solar array um, that's going to be placed on pavement. It's non-penetrating, non-disturbing, modular, relocatable equipment, which is just placed on grade. I think we described that last time. Excuse me, which ones are those to so It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's um, so if you're looking at the dead center, the big building in the middle, if you look at the 7 o'clock. No. 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 It, if you if that? look at the 8 o'clock, I'll call that the 8 o'clock. And then if you look at the uh, the 12 o'clock to the, to the top, those that two. one. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, the system is secured by a National Electric Code required 7-foot chain link fence. No public access is allowed to the array areas, and the emergency access is shown and will be discussed in the, in the plan. Uh, the electrical wiring and distribution is placed on the surface in chases. Medium voltage distribution equipment is mounted on concrete pads and overhead poles. The system interconnects to the grid at the substation, which is located on the north side of the parcel. If, if you go back to the 12 o'clock array, this is the, the small cutout just, just on the top side of that. Right there, perfect. All existing roadways remain in place. Uh, the department uh, review. The, the building commissioner has deemed the solar project an as of right use in accordance with section 4.133 of the zoning bylaw. Uh, fire, we're working with the fire department to ensure the highest level of safety for first responders. I met with the chief and the fire prevention officer several times to discuss design considerations to allow safe access to the site as well as proper orientation and training once it's constructed. The State Fire Marshal's Office has further provided comments just this afternoon, which will be incorporated into the layout. I'll be meeting with Lieutenant Bonifant tomorrow to finalize these changes and include them in the next plan set submittal. Uh, conservation. We've discussed the layout with, conserva with the conservation agent, and at this time, the project remains clear of jurisdictional areas that require any filing. Considerations for plan review. I'm going to pass out, there's, there's two handouts here, um, one on the top of the pile and one on the bottom that show the, the parking. Just wait a minute while those get passed out. So again, just to reiterate, the if you look at this, what you've done is you've cross-hatched in the darker color the stuff that's on the roof. Yes, the black color. The black those color. Those are roof melted, and those have been pulled out separate, just filed as right. a building permit. So yes, right. Okay. And all of the remaining uh, stuff that's on the ground is either in the back or at the top, right? Yes. Okay, and that equals the three point six. Okay. Yes, sir. So John, can I just clarify one more thing? Yeah. I think I know the answer, but there's no arrays here, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, in, in fact this, this drawing is a is a is a remnant from the earth, from the first discussion. The actual this isn't part of the uh, submitted plan set, but it, it, it shows a good overview of what what we'll be discussing. Uh, a general so review. what we'll look at is even what you this get. is part this of the, the second one for May sixth. This, oh, I'm, my, my apologies. Which, this is not the uh, which, one. Which, which page is this? On that one that he has right there, that's just one of the page numbers. It's number 11 of 19. Okay. 
Thanks for correct. I guess it's maybe just it looked grainy. Okay. Well, it, 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 that's, that's, okay. That's, that's a lot nicer looking. Than that. Yes. Yeah. That, that. Okay. My apologies. Excuse it. I retract that. That is page Hello. eleven of the plan set. Um, so the handout that's just been passed around uh, in, in hand. Uh, if you, if you look at the one with the picture on it, um, that enhances the same information that was um, submitted as part of the legal memo. And that was on the narrative, I guess. So this was submitted as part of the narrative today? Right. Um, what you just handed out? That was my very next line, yes. So you can reject so, that from the narrative. So, so the original legal memo um, on the second page included um, this, this drawing. It just it didn't photocopy well, so we updated it. Um, but this was further updated based on the legal narrative that was uh, submitted today uh, to the planning office, and I'll pass that around right now. We have the legal narrative. Okay. Okay, thank so, you. Yes, we provided Great. that hard copy because that came in today. Excellent. So we did not receive electronically. So with over 6,200 parking spaces on the property, of which 1,417 are currently required by the zoning bylaw for current tenants, there is no short of parking now or in the future. The project proposes a net gain of eight new spaces on the existing paved areas which are created in the north parking lot. Um, I don't know. Right? how I could possibly show you where they are, but they're, they're up there on the west side of the north um, parking lot. The how, are, how, are they how are new spaces created? Can you explain that? Thank you. So, so on, on, on the western side, so at the 9 o'clock of that, the large solar array, there's 27 spaces shown. Um, this is, these are spaces on existing concrete. Um, 19 of them are currently striped. Eight of them are not currently striped. They're hashed out because there used to be an old bus stop from okay. back in the day or something. Okay. So what we're proposing is just yeah, restriping. Right. Okay. So we're not, we're not putting down any new asphalt. We're just restriping to make it parking where it should be parking. The, the tenanted parking areas, such as the driving schools, motor pools, storage yards, and solar arrays, are not permanent losses of parking. As opportunities for future tenants in developments present themselves, any tenant-occupied parking spaces, including the solar project, can be relocated to create additional parking. And it's, it's worth repeating that over 6,200 uh, spaces on the property, of which there's only 1,417 occupied, um, th there's just no shortage of parking on this property. Uh, st stormwater. We had an initial discussion yesterday with Lisa Eggleston to describe the project. We determined that need, we needed a few more days to further research the requirements and finalize any proposed improvements to stormwater management. We anticipate having improvements submitted to this board by the end of next week. Wetlands Notice of Intent. The project layout avoids jurisdictional areas that would require any CONSCOM filing. There is a limited section of fence, um, which is shown in the 200-foot riverfront area of the south parking, or excuse me, of the, the, south, uh, the west solar array, um, though those are exempt from filing. So um, the conservation agent, Jennifer Hughes, was sent the plans for review. She has indicated she's going to wait until she receives Lisa's PLG comments. Um, again, she got some very preliminary comments based on a meeting we had with the applicant yesterday, and she didn't provide comments for tonight, but she does have them. Uh, traffic and signs. New striping to delineate drive lanes is shown on the drawings, and existing drive lanes remain in place, including all fire lanes. Landscape. I'm going to pass around a couple more visuals. Um, please. I only have two of these, so if you could share those, please. Since the project proposes very low profile equipment on the back side of the property, 
completely hidden from the front side of the building. There's, there's no need for screening. Um, while the solar arrays will be surrounded by a fence as required by the National Electric Code, it's necessary to maintain as much light transmis transmittance through the fence as possible for optimal system performance. The, um, the, the, two, the glossy two-pager that was passed around is the uh, specific mounting system that we're proposing for the project. Uh, it's it, Like I mentioned in the beginning, it's actually a roof. You'd find these on roof mounting systems. Um, but we've, we've, we've proposed it here because of uh, reasons I mentioned earlier. And I, I, what I realized that there wasn't anything that really put a scale to it. So I had um, uh, the president of the company, Costa, this is again a, a company that's, lo that's headquartered in the building. Um, that, so they actually manufacture and, 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 and ship uh, this product from the building. Um, I had him stand next to it just to show you the scale. It, it's, it's lower than his, the height of his knee. It's 14 inches. As I understand it, they make the, the things that attach to the panel. The racking. You can put any kind of panel in it. Yes, sir. Exactly. Lighting. Existing lighting remains in place in non-tentative drive lanes and pedestrian access ways. Several light poles that are currently located in the areas that are proposed for solar are not needed and would actually shade the modules, and they'll be removed as shown in the plans. Uh, airport. After discussions with Mike Miller of the Lawrence Airport, as well as the Mass Department of Transportation's Aeronautic Division office, we've been advised by MDOT, for short, that the original filing and determination from last October is still valid since the height of the obstacles is only reduced. Again, we recall we went from a uh, carport canopy at 14 feet down to 14 inches. And the updated locations of the modules were not material to the findings. Utilities. The solar arrays interconnect to the, to the grid through low and medium voltage distribution. The design and standards of the, this portion of the work are enforced by the wiring inspector per the National Electric Code standard. The physical interconnection of the solar project to the grid is completed in the property substation in the north parking area uh, through coordination approval by National Grid. And it's regulated by the Department of Public Utilities. Safety. There are numerous jurisdictional requirements and operational considerations to keep the public safe while visiting the property. Fencing. A seven foot fence with locked entry will ensure the public cannot access to the site. The National Electric Code plus state amendments ensure that all wiring, electrical equipment, and site security meet standards set forth by the governing body and enforced by the local authority having jurisdiction, who's the wiring inspector. Uh, the International Building Code plus state amendments ensure that all the structural and physical elements of the new work and remodeling meet standards set forth by the governing body and enforced by the uh, local authority having jurisdiction, who's the, the building inspector. Parking stops are added to spots immediately adjacent to uh, fenced solar areas, and this will add protection for tenants and visitors to the site. From It'll keep them from accidentally striking the fence or, or the panels while parking. A solar array, and finally, all solar array areas maintain a 360 degree access, whether inside or just outside the fenced areas for, for emergency uh, personnel. The solar area to the west includes a gated pass-through for emergency vehicle access. I'm almost done. Updates and south, uh, to the south parking area. This project amends the plans uh, to, to de-scope improvements to the south of the building for, from the previously discussed tenant re relocation. This is due to project time constraints and uncertainty about tenancy. The amendments that we're proposing delete pages 15 and 18 from the current plan set and amend pages 10, 11, 14, 16, and 17 of the plan set and amend the legal memo, which um, you already have in your hands. Uh, time constraints. Our Sorry, team. Can you, wait, 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 wait. Can you repeat that? I have no idea what you just meant by that. We're, 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 we've got to update the plans because not everything that's in the plans that you've seen from. Um, from about two, uh, a week and a half ago, I think we submitted or are still. Um, there, okay. There's going to be component. There's only going to be components deleted from it. We're not. Wait a second. Are you, are, you, are you saying that you're going to make another set of revisions yes. to the plan? Yes. 
So we have to make sure that what we give to our consultants is the version that we're working off of. And if we don't have those yet, we can't go to the consultants until we... Exactly. So they did yeah. a review based on the plans that were sent. They both have submitted comments already. But a new set of plans will have to go back to them. For the most part, um, the, the south scope is being eliminated, and which will eliminate a lot of the comments that were provided related to that area. Okay. We get to that area, but the footprint for the north and the west is really staying pretty much the same as the points they were given. In, in my, uh, let me do better with plain English. Everything to the south of, um, I, 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 I think I just need to point, uh, or Re Rebecca, the, the building that has the, um, the smokestack on it. Uh, oh boy! Why you come yeah. no, can, I, yeah. can I go up? No, no. Yeah. no. no. Okay. Um, so if you look at the sheet 16 square, yeah. uh, everything that's in that square is de being descoped. What does that mean, descoped? It's no longer part we're, of that. We're not yet. proposing to make any changes to what's currently there. Okay. So everything that you have in the plan set that contemplates. Um, the solar array construction remains exactly how it's been proposed. Again, barring updates that we may make over the next week from peer review comments and, and, and things. But, but, but today, um, everything that's in that sheet 16 is being uh, removed and there will be no changes made to that part of the site. Which previously was presented as demolition of some tanks there and relocation of nets to that location. Okay, so. now, okay. Where, remind me again, refresh my memory of where NETS is today and where it will stay. Yep. They're in the, on the left. In, in the west parking lot, um, where the solar panels are currently proposed. So where is NETS? So in section E on that plan. So yeah, where is NETS going, going to where so section E? That's where they are today. So that's where they the are question today. where they are today is section E. Okay. And that's where the array is going to go. Right. That, that's where the array is going to go. That's where the previous um, uh, uh, approved array was going to go as well. Um, if, if NETS is going to be, um, NETS may be re relocated, we, we don't know at this time. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, let me just repeat. Well, if, 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 if you're going to relocate it, you have to tell us. Is that the C? Is that C that you just showed us on the other plan? Would that be there? C and B? Is that where the C, smokestack is? C, nothing. So n everything in C and B do not change. Right. That's a, where B, the smokestack C. was. Correct. Okay. E everything to the south that's there That's where remains. they were going to knock that down. Right. That's where they were. There. But now, now they're not going to knock it down, so there's no place for nets. We're, so we're, we're not proposing to move nets at this time. Well, 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 but you, you, you can't come back to us towards the end of this and say we're going to move nets uh, because I, I, I mean if, if you're not going to you, you got to tell us if if you're planning on doing it but doing it sometime in the future you should tell us now so so our lease with nets expires on August 31st we are in discussions with them and we have not reached any conclusion and therefore we are not going to let it delay this particular solar project. If we were to come back with nets, we would come back in a completely different scope and a completely new project that we would bring back to the town and ask the town, you know, do what we need to do, get whatever permits and approvals we need to get. But at this time, based upon some of the issues that were raised by some of the peer review, the fact that their lease is expiring and based on the time constraints we're facing, the decision was made that the easiest thing to do right now is to descope it from the project, get the solar project approved, and while we continue to negotiate with NETS, hopefully we will work out an arrangement with them and we will come back to wherever we need to come at the town and submit that as a project. At, at the current time, their lease does expire on August 31st. Is it still contemplated that there'd be a phase two type initiative for the demolition of, I will call it, the Northwest? More no. likely not. More likely not. So before it was contemplated that the additional ones shown on the North plan now could be relocated there once it was um, demolished. 
but it would likely be a phase two. I think we would be looking to the same comments that you had at the last meeting. Yeah. Um, tell us what you're going to do. Yeah. Don't tell us about what you might do in the future. Okay. And that kind of we're having the same issue with nets that we were kind of having up north, which is what will some of the ancillary impacts be? And again, at the end of the day, we don't want it to slow the project down. But so I have a question. So the lease doesn't run out until August 31st, is that what you said? Yes. So what happens to them in the meantime when they, they start? We won't. They're going to they're going to continue to operate there until August 31st. Yeah, by the time we get through permits and approvals, the appeal period's over. We order the panels, have them shipped to the site. We'll probably start on the north parking lot before we start on the west, par west parking lot. We just pulled the building permits for the roof mm -hmm. today. And we've got a lot of work before. They, they signed off the building permits? Yep. So we, we've, got, we've got a lot of work to do before we would need to start to work on the west parking lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Th this speaks to um, the, my sort of concluding remarks. The project, for this to be a project, uh, it's got to be in service by the end of the year. Um, uh, for it to be viable. That's, this isn't our idea. This is just the, the state creates these um, um, opportunities and, and this, this opportunity expires at the end of the year. Um, so this is why you can sense our sense of urgency um, with the permitting process and about defining a scope that would allow us to achieve that objective. Um, we respectfully request the Planning Board consider a decision for the application uh, during the June 21st hearing. Um, uh, it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to tell you it's not going to happen. So can't. We don't even have any no, peer review. Plans. We don't even have final plans yet. So it's not going to happen. When we so can we now talk about the substance of it so we can ask questions because I think I still have a bunch of questions about exactly how everything fits together. Absolutely. Uh, can, what's the best single drawing you have that shows what you're doing uh, on the site? So, because I'd like to understand the, where they're all going to be, where the fence is going to be, and how the traffic is going to flow around it. So I think if we look at just the north first page and then just the south. Be, be just the west. I'm sorry, be, the west. Yeah. Yes. yeah, because of the scale, the, the drawings just, um, so so maybe, yeah, maybe start at the, the north. Let's start at the north. Let, let Rip tell them what page to turn to in their plan sets. It might be easier. Okay. Page, well, the roof is not part of this project at all, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, I don't know then why you have to show the roof things as part of what you're showing us. It does complicate the thing. We can delete that from the next design set. Okay, so at the very top of this is the roadway access coming from Osgood Street on the furthest north point of the project area. So this is the north side of the building. The, the, it's hard to see in red, but the chain link fence is the outline of the blue area. Is the chain link fence no, the, is it? It's the, the red. The blue or is it the red? The red, the red. The red, the red. red chain link fence. Again, if you turn to the plan sets that you do have, it's, oh, they don't have They don't them. have them in hard copy. Okay. You said it so, so, so the red is the, um, the chain link fence. Um, I, th I think what is also red is the curb stops that are shown in there that, that you see to the right of the chain link fence. They're not currently shown to the left, but we had some discussion. They'll be yes. added. They're is mistakenly left off. Fence here? Yes. 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 Okay. These are the curb stops? Yes. 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 And I think it says the chain link fence will be seven feet. Yes. Se seven feet per uh, National Electric Code requirement. At seven feet, we do not have to put um, additional measures on top. We don't have to put barbed wire on top of it. If it's under seven feet by the National Electric Code, you, have, you would have to do that. So that, that's why we, we use that height. So you keep a certain distance from the edge of the array to the fence. So, so that distance will be updated to 10 feet, and that was one of the, um, it is generally 10 feet in all but a, a, a few areas, and that, that was one of the comments sent back by the fire marshal's office. So that will be one of the updates. 
So does the fire marshal care that there's parking right at the edge, you know, and they just have to stop for that, or? They, they, they're fine with that. They just, um, they caught the same thing that um, I know Gene caught on, on, the, on the west side is that we were missing those tw the 27 spots over there in this drawing were missing the curb stops and those need to be added in and, and they will be added in. And, and so the civil peer review for this area, John, is still intact. So they have provided comments, but however, they were just late today. So they haven't okay. been responded to, but they also had some commentary related to this area. Okay. And that's all still intact. And I take it that that's a gate at the bottom of the array and a sort of a driveway of sorts through the array? Just for maintenance, yes. Right. Okay. Now at the top part of it, if you could just scroll down a little bit, does the fence and the array go, it, it almost looks like there's no 10 foot there at there, the, at the there. end. Where, Yes, sir. So, so that the so the area in, at the um, the twelve o'clock, eleven o'clock position of this array is the substation, and it's completely the two main buildings and and the uh, half dozen buildings below it are all fenced in. So that larger rectangle has a fence already surrounding it. So we're attaching our new work to the existing fence, and there that's why it's not shown. So okay. So you answered. So the fence will go out over the external perimeter, including those buildings. So there won't be like a fence that separates the array from the buildings. No. Okay. No, now at the very top, though, we're I think it's a roadway. And, it and looks like the array the goes up all the way to the roadway there. Yeah. Is is that? Am I looking at that right? Yes. There. There. So so that's that's the access road that comes in. Um, from uh, f from the north, the north entrance was what they, what they call it. So the fence there aligns with um, the fence in, in the back side of the substation. So it, it, it's I think it's the scale that's that's um, on this. There actually is um, the same standoff distance from the the, the lane roadway as. Well, is. then you should cut back the blue. By hey. The ten feet, then. Yes, which was the fire marshal's comment. You built too close to the array, so we're gonna we're gonna remove those okay. ten feet. Yeah. It also looks like that was originally a curb cut for this last parking row to go out. I can't tell. I mean, I can't yeah, open so the plan set on my. You, that was I, I, because I of think the file you're right, size. Lynn. And so that curb um, wouldn't cut you will want to stay. wouldn't you want to do a curb cut there? Because now you're gonna have one, two. You're gonna have a three row before you have the curb. I mean, I think you'd probably want to open that up so people could get out on that corner with the fences. I don't know, we haven't gotten the traffic study back yet, but that's just something to think about. So, I don't know. Thank you. Okay, so now my other question is, the substation that everything is going to connect to is the, those buildings on the left? Yes. yes. Are you gonna to have to create a new structure for that? Um, we're, we're finalizing this with National Grid right now. Um, there's not a new structure um, being, there's, there's not a structure that's required in order to do this work. Um, uh, the medium voltage line is at the nine o'clock on the screen right there is a red line that comes in east to west. Um, that depicts the, the, the extent of the medium voltage line. Um, we believe National Grid's gonna instruct us to bring the medium voltage line into that um, uh, Rebecca, if you could uh, just zoom back in on the substation. There's a, another oh. sheet that has a better. Oh, oh, thank you. So I just don't know what number it is. I can search through it while we have it up on the screen, but I know that there's one that has a better picture of exactly what you're trying to explain. Uh, medium voltage, yeah. Well, na National Grid is. Um, just finalizing their plans. We walked the site with them um, last week, and they what they're going to ask us to do is put some pad mount. There's an existing pad that's just um, one of those little blocks to the west of the main building. They're going to ask us to put a meter enclosure on it, 
and a, a disconnect switch, which is just electrical equipment. Um, that's going to terminate our um, uh, overhead lines that are going to be put in, and that's how we interconnect into the into the substation uh, through right there. So there's no additional structures that are going to be added for um, to that substation. Okay. Okay. Now, and remind us again how you're going to connect all of the panels all through the property to that substation. It's not so all going to be underground. We're not, none of that will be visible. There, there's very little, if any, that's going to be located underground. Um, so within within the extent within the fenced area of the arrays. We're going to have um, 480 volt low vol voltage. It's going to consist of solar panels, inverters, um, uh, sub panels, and other distribution equipment that's going to take all the energy from the panels and, and, and channel it into larger conductors. And the closer you get to the substation, the larger the conductors get. Um, so uh, when we get into um, the, the, the extent of the fenced area, we're going to go from low voltage to um, medium voltage um, through through the use of transformers, and we've, pr we're, we've proposed transformer paths. I understand paths. for the part that's directly abutting the substation, sort of intuitively how that will work. My question is for the stuff that's at the other end of the property, like where Nets is today. How does the power get from there to the substation? So the transformer pads that are um, shown on. Perfect, uh, Rebecca. If you uh, pl could please zoom into the of the west array, the two o'clock or the one o'clock corner of that. Um, I, I believe this is drawing. If this isn't the drawing in in that, yeah. Thank you. Um, so there's a there's a pad mounted transformer in that corner. That pad mounted transformer takes us from low voltage to medium voltage. From that transformer, there'll be a line of overhead poles um, that will get us uh, perfect. Yes, right there. So if, if you look in the um, sort of near the center of the screen, it says proposed interconnection. Um, that, that's a, a transformer pad. So all the wire goes to there, gets stepped up to medium voltage, and then there's a slashed red line that, that cuts north um, and, and goes up to the, essentially to that northern access road, and then cuts east right to the substation. Well, again, now I'm confused. You said, uh, so what you're saying is from the stuff that's there, it's going to be on the right-hand side, and it's going to go up the right-hand side. But how is it? How tall are the poles going to be? Because this is the first I've heard about poles. Are they uh, like utility poles? Yes, U utility. So, so it's a. Um, I, I believe these are. Uh, um, I've got to look at the spec. A Twenty-five, uh, typically twenty-five foot u utility pole that'll have um, medium voltage run along them. Um, They'll, they'll take us up to the to the northern road and then cut east. Uh, it's it's it, it only makes sense to use overhead utility poles to get the energy back up to the substation. Um, th this this site has um, got massive amounts of utilities buried underneath it, uh, much of which is is, is obsolete. Um, our our perspective is in going with the theme of the modularity and. But, right. but are all Nature those of this utility project. poles that you're putting in on the plan? Um, it, uh, it's, it's marked as uh, the specific poles are not shown poles on the plan. Poles are not the line is shown running. The line. So yes. how many poles are we talking about? I don't know. Um, I, 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 I've got to get the exact number. I, this I, civilian I, consultant had brought that up in one of their comments, comment 12, for more detail. Whether or not the, how many poles, are they below grade, above grade? It's very hard to see at the top that no. line actually is within that building footprint going across, and that's one of the peer review comments as well. So we don't know if it's running over it or it just needs to be done around. Um, so yeah, so 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 that that um, that that structure it's, it's actually a pad that's attached to the exterior of the building, um, and and there's a, a shed roof over it. So this will have the National Electric Code clearance over that. In, in order to, to safely pass over that. 
Um, now, when we went through the, the technical review committee, um, this was absolutely discussed, and I was uh, told by the, the, uh, the town officials that this is a, 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 a National Electric Code uh, component that would be addressed by the wiring inspector. So. Um, I didn't. I didn't see the requirement in, we in the bylaw. Yeah. To it because I didn't know whether yeah. it's going to be allowed to be overhead and not underground or not. It was, it was just detail we didn't have at that time. But if, if, we can get the detail. Around. Absolutely. So yeah. Then how do you go from all the roof mounted stuff? And I know that's not on there, but it actually is relevant because how do you sure. get the power from the roof? Are, are so you going to have to, con uh, if is it more poles it, or is it just the same uh, ones? No, no. So, so the, the roof system is going to be um, uh, brought, so the, the, the point of coupling is um, right, uh, right in this almost dead center of that uh, page, I uh, wish I had a pointer, um, the, 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 there, there's a, a trussle system. So if, you, if you've ever, if you've looked at the back of this property, there's overhead trussles that um, run from building to building. That's how many of the utilities are run from building to building in this, in this back complex. So there's a trussle that comes over to building 70. So the, the, the blue solar panels you see on the, on the right at the three o'clock is the actually part of- The right or on the roof? That's right? on the roof. Yeah. And coming right off of the, the, the side of that building is gonna be our medium voltage feed that's actually connects to the trussle. It, it's not actually, it, it, it looks like it doesn't connect, but it does. Um, it's going to come across the trussle and down, and that's where it's going to um, couple with the uh, the medium voltage line that's running uh, running north. So that's that's how the that's how the rooftop system is going to interconnect. And how about here. the one in the front? Um, uh, the the one in the, yeah the one in the front of the building is going uh, the front building building 20 is going to uh, connect uh, similarly across the the, the rooftop um, of Building you go 30. Back and get maybe the first, uh, the, the, the very first one that's the master one. Okay. So, okay, so show us how that's going to connect. You see that there's a there's a blue line that runs across the top the north side of the main building. That's actually an um, activity use limitation line. It's it's going to be in a similar um, area to that, um, where it's going to go from the the building 20 across the roof of building 30, across 70, so and then re this re is down. just is it like wire or what is it? Is it conduit or on, so on on a rooftop? It's it's wire inside conduit. Yeah. Um, and then when it goes to overhead wire, it's um, just, just like you see going up your street. So the conduit on top of the roof is laying on the roof or is it on yes. the pole? Oh no, it's on, I'm sorry, it's on sleepers. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it's very low to the ground, absolutely not visible from the ground. Um, it, you, you, you wouldn't believe how much, you, how many utilities and I mean, there's massive coolant lines and things on the roof that you never even knew were there. Um, so this is going to follow um, generally the utilities that are already on the roof. So in that case, everything that's from the front, it's going to get carried over to the other array and then it's going to go into that ground line eventually. Yes. Okay. In, into the, into the, so we, I'll call that the main, the medium voltage trunk. Which is going to capture everything and, and uh, bring it up to the substation. The um, the northern array um, would probably just um, interconnect into you know we wouldn't we wouldn't run that system down to run it back up. We're just going to have it connect right into the, um, uh, the, the 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 pad at the front of the substation there. Into the into the switch. What size conduit do you need? Do you know for, to run across the roof at this point? How big are the wires? Do you have any, any, any idea? Four or six inches. Yeah, they're about four. Yeah, four they, in, in the range of four or six inches. Okay, so um, that's so the, what would be carrying from the that side isn't that large then perspective. It'd probably be about the same and, and, percentage wise. Or yeah, the, I mean, the, it's it's medium voltage, so it's um, the the conductors that are in that four to six inch are actually very small. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, You're yeah. So. So 
So, so we'll get a count in a in a in a plan of the um, utility poles that we'll be um, using. Again, I, I just wanted to finish the finish a, a comment which I, I think is important to the discussion. Um, burying those utilities at the site, it's just. It's not the right answer for a project that we're, we're designing to be very flexible and modular. Um, to, you know, the the lifespan of this project is like half the lifespan of a New England apple orchard. Um, you know, apple orchards you put in for 40 years. This this is a project that's that um, will be out there for 20 years or until a, a better use uh, for that land comes up. And um, frankly, it, it would it'd be a wonderful day when we have the opportunity to put that on the roof of a new building. So it, it, it only makes sense to us to, to try and put utilities overhead um, uh, rather than any other way, because it would just be, it would be a, a, an impossible task to try to, to, to do it any other way than what we've proposed. The, where is the, uh place that is the, uh, there was a, uh, we actually had somebody that came in front of us with a, a dog, uh, uh, I don't the care facility, where's that? Yeah. So it's in the, the very top left corner. So, so there, um, the, the building at the, at the nine o'clock of the, the solar array, the furthest to the west. One, one closer one to the left. left. Yep. Right yeah. there. So you okay. see the little triangle the yeah. right where the cross is, the right. grass area. Yeah. yeah. And they were housed within that building. Okay. And that's still going to have as far as you know. There's nothing that you're doing that's preventing it. No. Oh, absolutely not. Nope. Okay. Any, uh, Pete, any questions? Are these not the plants not workable? The plan's not legible. We can't even read it. Yeah. Right. yeah. The, you know, I, I don't know why that is because these drawings are yeah. beautiful. And, and it's not like that in our computers. So whether it's related to Google Drive that we're using now, okay. we'll look at it for the next. The meeting. size of the document. The document is extremely large. Yeah, it's when a huge. You Can you um, flatten it when you send the PDF? That's I think that'll solve the problem because you all the layers are in there for every architectural right. detail. If you flatten it first, they do as much as they do to compress it. But the, okay. The problems these drawings are beautiful. And that's yeah. very depressing to see that. Yeah. But there's a pro yeah. If you print to print to an, a PDF. That's all. It's that's what what's called flattening. It'll yeah. it'll reduce your file okay. size without compressing we'll try it. To, like yeah, I'll by, try that. And you could use a few. I'll tell you, but it'll reduce yes. it by ninety percent. I, I can flatten it, there. but I have to get it for a skill flatten. You know. So, these so you just do print to PDF. Print to with Adobe PDF. Print to PDF, and that'll flatten it. That means you can't edit all layers. It takes those out of the tool. Laura. No, I'm good. Dave? No, my comment was, is this the final thing we're going to say, you see? Um, because, you know, I don't want to have to start from scratch and then mm -hmm. All right, so, people say. So what is that timetable? When do you foresee getting a revised plan set? Can I? And when can we get that to fair review? To answer both questions, we get, real quickly, we met, we didn't meet, we had a conversation with Lisa by conference call. She got back from vacation on Thursday. When we spoke with her, she hadn't even reviewed the plans yesterday. We kind of walked her through it. So she doesn't have her comments. We are trying desperately to set a meeting up with her Tuesday or Wednesday. We're hopeful for Wednesday. We got a list late this afternoon from TEC that many of the comments on there are now moot because of descoping the, the nets area. We get comments from the fire department. I don't think you'll see anything of any significance change. As a matter of fact, I could almost almost guarantee you that by the end of the day, Wednesday, we'll have met with Lisa, the fire department, and TEC one more time and make all those minor changes. There are things like most of the fence lines are over 10 feet from the array, but there's a couple that aren't. There needs to be some wheel stops added in one spot and little tweaks like that, but you're not going to see anything major and changes. So we think we'll be in great position by Friday of next week to submit revised plans that meet everybody's approval. And you said end of the day Wednesday. You don't mean tomorrow. You mean a week, a week from, from tomorrow. tomorrow. She yeah. can't meet. She, Lisa can't meet yeah. with us till tomorrow till next week. Yeah. As as to the north and as to the west, 
as to the areas on the plants that they already have that concern the actual physical solar structures and the solar construction. Those essentially are complete other than these minor tweaks. I would agree with that, and yes. And the changes to the plans are only basically pulling off the Nets South parking lot. Correct. So when you look at these plans, north and west, all of the solar is shown other than any minor modifications from the fire chief here with you. So you really are, when it comes to the actual 3.6 megawatts of solar, I, you're seeing the plans. I, I agree with that, that the north and west footprint of the solar panels have been reviewed and comments have been provided. Whether they be right. minor comments or not, we need to get responses. I, I mean, things that we ask the applicant to change based on our review, that's distinct from the plans we want reviewed. Right. And, you know, it is, and if this is what we have now materially, what we want reviewed, then we can conduct the reviews. You know, we don't think we have to wait uh, another week, week and a half if, you know, again, uh, it's only cosmetic stuff that is going to change from this. I, I, I will admit uh, I'm a little confused uh, about which is the plan of record, but if the plan of record is very close to what the applicant wants us to do, then I'm, I'm okay with that. The, the plan of record for the part that needs to be reviewed is staying for the most part the same. There have been comments provided regarding landscaping and buffering and things like that that the applicant needs to respond to. Again, they may deem them minor and respond that they're not applicable, but um, there's also access, enough. and we don't have any fire department review comments yet, yeah. so I, it's hard to yeah. state whether those are minor or not. Um, she, and I think all that is feasible by certainly the next meeting. It, for the most part, the scope lessened in terms of their review and comments on both civil and stormwater both had comments related to the part that is being deemed de-scoped. Um, so, so right, and that's fair enough if it's, they are moot. Uh, if, if that's not what the plan is, then we don't have to deal with them. Right. So okay. I, think I think there's enough commentary to move forward in, in terms of your review with these peer reviewers and yes. a second meeting. So, and then eventually the next set of plan updates are going to incorporate yes. those revisions. Right, and you can choreograph all that. Yeah. Okay. Su submitted by next Friday. I, so everybody can. Yeah. A week from Friday. Well, the meeting is the Tuesday after that. The so Tuesday. being it, if that's when they're submitted, being able to digest them would be okay. a couple of days. Okay. I had one, one more thing. Um, when I Googled requirements for a large scale social array, a whole bunch of stuff came up from the Department of Energy Resources, Massachusetts. Sure. I assume you've gone through all those things. Because it talks about how site plan review in a typical zoning thing, which we don't have, but we are doing a site plan review now. Mm -hmm. It has the things that should be covered in it. You seem to be have addressed a lot of them just in your talk. But have you gone to, have you just looked at those things? I don't want to spring anything to you that's a surprise. Oh, no, please, a ask all the questions. Um, I, I, I've, I've been involved in the solar industry for about 10 years, and, I, but, and but I've, but I've worked with these things. Because it, I've it, actually it written some of the handbooks <laughs> um, that they use. If you yeah, have questions yeah, you yeah. want to ask, yeah. ask them. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, but absolutely, we, 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 we pay very close okay. attention to um, DOER, and the, there's, there's a lot of moving parts in developing a project like this that we've accounted for. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we have. Uh, I, have a, I have a comment. Did, 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 I don't did you know. have a question? There may be public yeah, comment. I, I, hmm? Yeah. There may be public well, comment here. Uh, is there? Yeah. Well, I still have a comment too. No, okay. Can, here, one of the things, for yes. example, and there's a whole a lot of here, unless you want to spend the evening here or the night here, the morning. Um, one of the things are, what are the panels? Who makes them? You know, what is the uh, so what, what's the chemical thing that they? You need to have you. you so, uh, no, but there, there's late. yeah. There's a chemical materials chemical description data sheet. Data sheets. Data, yeah. MSDS. Be a, you know, you've got to have all that stuff as part of the site plan review documents. That's what they suggest is a good thing. Now, you know, either say no, we don't need to do that, or but there are a lot of things in here. It didn't it didn't take too long to read, but I 
Uh, there are certain things that are really more building permit oriented than planning board oriented. I, I mean, we don't do, you know, we've got to be careful about how we no, understand. You know, boil the ocean here. They were just saying, what is yeah. the, what are the requirements that should be included in the zoning for a set yeah. plan? Okay. So, you know, I have to see what the real proposal that you have is before I can go. Th this is the real proposal, yes. Okay, and yeah. I, yeah. I think, you know, I don't have any problems okay. with what you're proposing in terms of the pad-mounted things. Uh, I assume solar panels are solar panels. They're, they're a commodity now. Um, I assume you'll be high enough for the uh, overhead wires. Yes. It talks about, you know, the rest of the things are typical site plan. Landscaping, access, fences. So, but you might yes, just want to take a look at that. Yes, sir. Okay. On sheet 12, where the little cutout is, the bump in, looks like those two rows were dead-ended for the parking. Is that, or are you going to change the parking configuration to make it circular? It was commented on the peer review. We'll, okay, we'll I've got, yeah, we just got no, the end we'll, of it today. We'll so, <laughs> okay. Okay. So we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. Was it no public okay. comment? That's, was that so, asked? Comments yeah. from the public? No. No? Okay. okay. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Bruce. I, we would have. Uh, yeah, John, I'm thinking this is all just this line that night. I said you, the finance committee, no, John, you go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I that one. <laughs> uh, so the town of North Andover is seeking a waiver from a watershed special permit in terms of demolition of the North Pump Station within the non-disturbance zone. The pump station was decommissioned in 1991. The site is currently overgrown and in disrepair. The project involved the demolition of an existing water pump station, exterior concrete tanks, and equipment pad. The project did not involve any new construction, and the town is also filing a notice of intent of conservation in Mass DEP. They presented at the last conservation meeting, and they are following up with conservation at their meeting tomorrow. Okay. The existing condition. Okay. And we've also drafted a waiver. And your pathway, can you guys uh, give us the short story of what you're trying to do? Sure. Um, thank you for uh, hearing the project. My name is Nate Little, project engineer with Water and Current, uh, and Kyle Gerlach, also an engineer with Water and Current. Um, presenting on behalf of the Department of Public Works. Um, so a little bit of background on the pump station. Um, it's located on Great Pond Road. Um, here are the site plans. Um, me now the north. It's on the north side of Lee, uh, Kachichwit. Um, this is looking at it from south on your top of your screen to north on the bottom of your screen. So it's on the north side of the lake, um, right along Great Pond, Great Pond Road. Um, this is the one right by Butcher Boy. Yes. yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, the building itself consists of an old uh, pump station with a chemical room um, and a couple of uh, ex an exterior addition that was added to the building. Um, for an ozone um, system. Um, also an uh, exterior concrete underground tank contact chamber for that ozone system um, that you can see on the upper right hand of the building. Um, the, the station itself was decommissioned um, in 1991 after the new water treatment plant was built and has been left unused uh, ever since. Um, if you've driven by the building, you'll see that there's the site itself is highly overgrown. Um, and uh, the structure itself itself is starting to become a safety hazard. Um, the roof has leaks and, and damage to it. Um, and uh, not to be safe to, um, it's definitely a safety and an uh, aesthetic um, eyesore. Um, so as far as the overview of the, the project, um, the remaining equipment and process piping, uh, which is minimal within the pump station, is, is planned on being removed um, and disposed of. Um, a hazardous, hazardous materials inspection was completed by Woodard and Kern um, in February. 
Um, some hazardous materials were identified in the building, uh, including asbestos and some lead. Um, an inspection report has been pulled together um, based on that inspection with recommended procedures for um, abatement of those materials. Um, following abatement of hazardous materials, demolition, re, uh, full demolition of the site uh, and the structure, um, the fencing, um, the exterior concrete tanks, the, the roofs of those tanks, um, and some of the sidewalls of those tanks down to below grade. Um, as well as the building's foundation to, to below grade. Um, and then the building and the exterior tanks would be uh, filled with common fill um, and compacted up to existing grade. Um, the, the site that's disturbed, the area disturbed with the millennial work would be um, loaned and seeded and, and brought back to um, pre precondition, pre-existing condition. Um, there is some uh, conditions um, that the uh, Conservation Commission gave us, um, one of them being to uh, include some native plantings within the 25-foot um, no disturb zone. Um, that was one of their conditions. Um, they were also waiting on the mass DUP file number, um, which we've received uh, since our hearing with them. And uh, there are two existing um, potential uh, underground storage tanks that were noted in some existing plans um, and some further investigation has to be done um, to identify uh, whether those exist or not and um, and how those are going to be handled moving forward with the project. So we're working with Conservation Commission um, and with the DPW on, uh, on that aspect as well. Um, the proposed work is within the resource areas, which is the reason um, why we're going forward in front of the Conservation Commission with the NOI. Um, that's within the 50-foot conservation no-build buffer zone, the 25-foot no-disturbance buffer zone, uh, and it's within the FEMA flood zone, 100-year uh, flood zone. Um, however, uh, you know the project will result in the removal of impervious area um, from the site, uh, approximately 2,250 square feet of impervious area, um, and we'll return that area to a vegetative state. Um, peak discharge, uh, so stormwater analysis was done, and peak discharge runoff rate uh, for a 100-year storm is going to be reduced from 9.89 to 9.73 CFS um, on the site. Uh, and um, with the removal of the existing structure, we'll see an increase in, in compensatory flood storage within that FEMA, FEMA flood area. Um, during uh, demolition, uh, during construction of this project, uh, Hay bales and sill fence are proposed for use uh, for erosion control measures um, and a dewatering detention basin for any dewatering that, that needs to take place on site, um, which involves hay bales, um, erosion control matting, and uh, three-quarter stone. Um, so any dewatering will be dewatered into that structure, um, which will be within the, the hay bales and sill fence as well. Um, as, I, as we previously stated, we, we have submitted an NOI with the Conservation Commission. There was a hearing on um, May 25th, and we had a continuance based on those several items that I discussed, and we're um, working to get those addressed with them um, currently. What do we think, Pete? Uh, the debris from the demolition is mm -hmm. all being removed off site? Correct. Uh, the intake pipe from the lake into the pump station, what happens to that? It'll be cut and capped. Um, and where is it being cut and capped? Directly within the foundation wall. Okay. Yeah. But the pipe itself leading into the lake remains. Correct. And after it's cut and capped, is that then below grade and Correct. covered? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that'll be within the structure. That'll okay. be back from the back. And you but, said um, common fill, the back fill. Is mm -hmm. there any uh, uh, sort of um, grade of fill in terms of fill that will not reach damaging materials into the lake? We have, uh, we have a specification for a common fill um, that we can send to um, the planning board if you would like. Does it wouldn't have any, it wouldn't have any um, hazardous materials within not, the common fill. It would not. Correct. And uh, is any of this work uh, impact the uh, stone bulkhead on the perimeter of this property where, where it ends at the lake? Some of that stone bulkhead is falling, but is that within the scope of this project or not? It wasn't within the scope of the project to remove any of the stone bulkheads. And the perimeter fence that goes around the property that right now um, 
in theory, limits people who have access to the site with the locked gate, does that remain? That would be removed. Yep. And then what's the plan after that's removed and the work is done? Um, that would be up to the to the town to decide how to move forward with it. It is the town's property, so it would be the, right. the decision of the town to how they move forward with the with the project site. What's the material? The material of the pipe? Um, they replaced a lot of that pipe in, in the mid eighties and we believe it's ductile iron. It's what? Ductile iron. I have a question about, you said there's asbestos. Mm -hmm. Will you have an asbestos removal company come in to handle? Correct. There will be okay. asbestos. We have specifications for all the hazardous materials okay. removal, um, which will require certifications for asbestos removal. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, you know, and is there lead involved? I'm sorry, any lead involved in any of this? I don't, I don't know. Is, is there any lead? Yeah, the, in the NOI we have attachment E, which has all the hazardous materials, and <clears throat> there is believed to be um, some lead in um, some painted wood components associated with the trim. Um, there's also the potential for um, some existing piping in the basement to have um, lead washers and gaskets, which will be identified um, during construction. The, one of the issues was that there was some standing water in the basement um, when the inspection was done and the access wasn't, we couldn't get access to, to the basement. But all of that would be remediated and removed? Correct. Right. Proper yep. controls? Yep. yep. Well, there's no lead going out into the, there's no lead piping going out into the lake. No, no lead piping, no. no. That's a break. Given the proximity to the lake, just the hay bills and silt fencing, is that the best management practice? I mean, I constantly see the silt fencing falling down on other projects. I mean, we're, especially where we're doing demolition. Mm -hmm. Um, we believe that the silt fence and hay, hay bales, if maintained properly, um, is, is a more than adequate um, if maintained erosion properly. control. Okay. Correctly. What do you foresee as the duration of the project? Will it take a couple months? A few months. I would, okay. yeah, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, a long duration. Planning on doing it. Um, that's so we're waiting for approval from the Conservation Commission and um, setting a, a schedule with, um, with the DPW, with both Bruce and Glenn. Um, there has been some talk of of waiting until the fall to do it um, after the um, summer season because we do know a lot of people use the area for recreational purposes. Um, so the schedule hasn't been finalized as to when the, the start date or when. Um, and and who would do it? Would, would you bid it? Is that how you would give the Correct. It would be, yeah, it would have to be bid. It would be public public bid. Yeah. Uh, the catch point under chapter 149. Waiting too long, you won't get it, um, that you won't be able to revegetate the same season if you wait too late. In so sure, and we can we'll address that in the contract documents as far as when the um, substantial final completion of the project will be done, and, and when the um, you know when it will be loamed and seed and and the plantings, new plantings, the native plantings uh, installed. Follow up on Lynn's comment with the um, hay bales and the fence there. Um, from a different perspective, when the demolition is occurring, do you have any controls in place for windblown debris? It's a very short distance from there mm -hmm. into the, the drinking water supply. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if there's an indication of lead in the um, the uh, trim, yep. and if in the demolition that's being busted up, mm -hmm. that becomes airborne and goes 20 feet and settles into the lake. Is there any air with airborne uh, dust control? Yeah, for the for any. Um asbestos materials that are going to be removed. There is enclosures that are required around um, asbestos containing materials. Right. Um, so that will have to be adhered to and um, sampling if necessary on, on the soils around those materials. Um, I don't anticipate, I think the only, the lead, uh, potential lead paint items were um, trim work around the windows. Um, so they would maintain uh, the same procedures for those. And minimize, um, minimize you know, wind blowing debris. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that there were two tanks that may or may not be there. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just surprises me because you have so much other detail. How yeah. would you not know that? Um, they are underground tanks, um, and we haven't done any excavation on site. Um, the old records, we had some old plans from the town. Um, one of the very old plans that wasn't dated did show two underground storage tanks. Um, 
the more recent plan um, when they added the uh, wooden garage um, to the east of the building and the ozone contact chamber showed one storage tank on the north side of the um, station. Um, but we haven't done an investigation as far as test pitting, um, but it is, it is anticipated that we will do that um, prior to uh, I mean, what's, if they were there, what's the implication of that, and what's the worst scenario that you would envision? The worst scenario, which um, you know we would ant wouldn't anticipate, um, but there's always a possibility, would be that that fuel storage tank was damaged and fuel had released from from it into the surrounding soils. Um, in that case, DEP would need to be notified um, if if there was actual. Um, you know, fuel oil that was remaining in the tank that was was exposed oh, to the soil. Yeah. Um, yeah, depending if it was released and if yeah. the if the surrounding soils had that material. Um, best case scenario is we test pit and there's no. there's no tanks there at all and there's no evidence of any okay. contamination. Um, that work would have to be done under the um, supervision of a, a licensed site professional um, who's licensed here in the state of Mass, um, which we have uh, in our company. Um, and intend to use when we do that but investigation. Would you need to do that before you to determine make a determination before Correct, you do the what, project. Correct. That's what the, that's what we're anticipating. Um, the the difficulty with with not doing that ahead of time and, and some things that we've considered is is adding um, a bid alternate and we may do that even if we find that the tanks exist. Adding a bid alternate to um, to the bid itself um, to separate those items out and and let us identify what the cost is going to be from the contractor for those items specifically. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, we have, uh, our company has done similar, similar, yeah. uh, similar work and, you know, they can range depending on the severity of um, the existing tank and if there is any um, material that is, is contaminated soil surrounding it, you know, anything from 10 to, 10 to 20 thousand dollars per tank. Is there any chance of the lake, portions of the lakefront collapsing in some way or water coming in and then going back out again into the reservoir? Um, based on the height of the lake, uh, I don't believe that, like a, a tidal concern, if, if that's no, what you're No, not tidal, out. just as you go down into some of these things, find that you open up and water is gushing in from the lake. The, the, the edge of the building itself is uh, about 25, 20 to 25 feet. Um, from the from the lake, um, and the, the, it does have a concrete foundation, okay. um, so we would only be uh, removing soils down probably a, a foot. You saw um, no signs of seepage or anything. Though. No, not that we know of. Um, the rain that was, or the the water that was in the structure when we were there, we believe, was rainwater, because um, there are some holes in the existing roof. Um, so, to the best of our knowledge, the water that was in there was probably rainwater. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could to thank you for your, your careful consideration. I think you put a lot of thought and effort into it. Um, I think you can tell from our questions that I think we're probably bordering on paranoid about this, frankly, because this is literally the closest thing to the lake I've seen in all my years on the planning board. And it's got some variables in it that are dicey, asbestos, lead, other sorts of things. So. I would want to feel comfortable beyond a reasonable doubt that we're using absolute best practices for something like this and that there's a margin of error. It's almost like we've got belt and suspenders and maybe two or three pairs of uh, suspenders here. I mean, yep, absolutely. And uh, I don't know if that's sort of Bruce, built into the plan of what you're so planning to do here, you know, but the plan. Yeah. that's why we hired these people because they're yeah. the experts in it and they're going to be on site when. This yep. is going on. So. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, at least we have them under contract to, uh, to yeah. do both, not just your typical uh, construction oversight, but also to do the uh, you know, review of, it, of the hazardous materials, yeah. if there are any, and how that's to, you know, deter, uh, detected and remediated. So that their function will be oversight. Oversight. It won't yeah. be doing. No, we, no, no, we no. won't be. Okay. The bidding laws went along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll be bidding. We have to bid it publicly, you know, under Chapter 149 and, and yeah. said, and that'll, and I'll go, well, I, I, I really want to do it late in the season because I don't want to disrupt everything that goes on in there. And then um, the the plantings will, you know, we'll, we'll work with the contractor. We'll have, you know, so many months for substantial completion yeah. and then completion and all that stuff. So the plantings will be in the next 
planting season. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, Pete, that I think you suggested, it's almost like you test just about every day just to make sure there's not a problem, you know, uh, that nothing leaches in. And I, I imagine some protocol like that is probably part of what you're proposing. Yeah, we have stuff. standard specifications for yeah. removal of all these hazardous materials, um, yeah. which we use on on projects similar to this so, all the time. And the other thing, John, just the last part of it, this, uh, what it occurred was the engineers of record and also on site with, with the other pump station, the ones with, the one we're building. And yeah. the, so, you know, okay. they got it. They know what they're doing now. So, so this the, one. Yeah. The standard test specifications, mm -hmm. that's reassuring, but this is not a standard site because it is immediately adjacent to the drinking water supply. So if I think of you know, an inland site, not near any drinking water, no wetlands, no watershed, standard testing regimen. And then I think of one immediately adjacent to the drinking water supply. So is the standard regimen sufficient for this proximity to the water supply? Yes, yes. Um, it's, you know, the most precautious and, and um, the most detailed. We call it standard specifications because they're what we use on projects, but we take, you know, and we put them through the utmost uh, scrutinous review, and they are held to the highest standards. So. And so whoever wins the work through the bid, yep. you will be there monitoring through Correct. that. Correct. We do have a yeah, we have a construction administration contract um, to to review um, and be on site for for work. And will you actually be testing the water of the lake in, that's in proximity to where the construction is going? That's not part of the scope. Um, if it's something that um, should be considered, it, it I, could be. I don't think that that's I necessary. Think that's, I, certainly, we will be watching. It. Yeah, and I don't see what what would be released that would go in there. We keep an eye on it, but I don't think we need to go in and start sampling that. We sample the lake anyways, as you can see. Yeah, look, see, that's what I wonder. Uh, it's one of the places where you sample. We we we, we sample there. all over the, all over the lake and then the tributary. So, so you thought you did it in that. consistent places, right? Yeah. No, they 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 do they do different locations. They'll do some specific ones for the tributaries, but then when they're doing the lake sampling, which is there's two different types of monitoring, they monitor around. Lead, lead and asbestos abatement is very, very strictly regulated. Yeah. And yes, it's our lake water, but trust me, when they, it's the specifications are done for schools also where kids are and stuff like that. Yeah. They, what they have to follow is not going to leach lead or asbestos into our lake. Yeah, got it. Got it. Or Good. what else might there be there? Well, they, that's, you know, they, have you know, list, they have a whole list of items. Okay. And the health department so, has some oversight, and certainly the building department is going to have certification requirements with the building permit. As yeah. Well. So. Okay. Now, this is a good discussion. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I appreciate the it. The only thing I would yeah. reinforce here is if while you're providing oversight on the site, if there are particularly windy conditions when actual demolition is occurring, mm -hmm. you could end up with a sheen on the lake of dust from the demolition. Mm -hmm. and what's in the dust. So that type of windblown, um, I, I mean, I've had some experience, for example, with um, shipyards where you're removing hazardous material from a hull and you have to prevent any of the dust from going in the water. And there are very stringent requirements for that, which yep. I don't think apply here. But I'm just using that as a comparison. Nope. What we don't want to have happen is a windy day during demolition and a visible sheen of demolition dust on the water. Correct. And so we, we trust that you will have procedures in place here to prevent that. Yep. When all the hazardous materials removal um, requires has procedures in place um, to, to minimize and eliminate any um, exposure. The, uh, what I would sort of recommend, because I think everybody is okay with granting the waiver, is to maybe a little bit beef up the conditions, you know, and I don't know if maybe uh, you might want to add a couple things or, you know, again, you, you can couch it in such a way that you're not hamstringing them in terms of what they do, but take reasonable precaution against 
win that sort of thing. And, right. You know, yeah. so, yeah. so we can add some of the comments brought up today yeah. to yeah. the draft. And great. Yeah. Sure. We can yeah. um, have that Peter review sense. it yeah. prior to signing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would be great. We did that recently on the different watershed comments. So would someone uh, like to make a motion to approve the waiver subject to the caveats we raised? Make a motion to approve okay. the waiver subject to the caveats modifications. No. For zero break on the yeah, pump station. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion made. Second. And seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. What a great presentation. It really was. It was. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was a very good presentation. It's amazing, when, it's amazing when they actually know they saw. Yeah. Almost as a, of a par as the one that went before. John told me how said he gets when engineers don't know what they're talking about. No. So I make sure they go. <laughs> <laughs> On the agenda is the presentation of the watershed study. Um, there's been a lake study group kind of informally um, meeting. It has consisted of Peter Borton, Bruce, Jennifer Hughes from Conservation, and myself. Um, and now Julie. And Julie, yes. So, and, and most recently, Glenn uh, from the water, water treatment plant. Um, so, we put together a presentation. Again, Julie is really done some great work in my opinion on this. Mm -hmm. um, so Bruce is going to provide kind of a high level overview and then we can get into some discussion. And, uh, <laughs> my participation in this group has really been uh, with respect to my volunteer role as harbor master yes. rather than planning committee. Yes. And uh, you, 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 you were mentioned last night oh. uh, <laughs> at the uh, selectments meeting. Oh, I was. We, there was specific notice made of the harbor master. <laughs> oh, I have to check the video. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't uh, begin to tell you how much um, I've appreciated Peter's work, and all of us have. He's kind of taken on a stewardship of this and uh, focused us all, and I think that uh, he's done a great job. I get my emails every Monday morning. Uh, pretty soon we're going to get him a hat with the old things on it, a cannon. Um, all right, do we have uh, the presentation? Or? Yep. yep. Just trying to load it. I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Not again, Peter. Not again. Let me. While we're doing this, just, just so test. anybody that has seen this, two presentations actually. This is a little bit more on the water quality and the things that we're doing. And the other presentation, and we'll briefly, Peter and I can kind of get into that a little bit. We gave the, the selectmen because we're changing some of the uh, voting. Reg we want to change some of the voting regulations and some of the things that happen around the lake, and you'll see why. So this this got a two presentations, and when Peter and I came to do that one. Uh, the, the town manager and I had dueling uh, laptops. <laughs> Couldn't get anything up. We had to do it by paper. Hopefully, we don't have to do that again. But uh, anyway, so let me, uh, as as uh, Gene said, we have representatives of planning and conservation and the harbor master and the water department in, in, in DPW involved in this. And what we wanted to do tonight is just to give you an idea of where we are with water quality in the lake. And I just I just want to make sure that everybody understands that y your water is, is is great. There's no issues with, with the water. We have a uh, different, and you'll see there's, there's different levels that we use to protect the lake. And uh, one of them is the you know watershed management and the monitoring. And one of the things we want to uh, get to, and of course then the other thing is, is the, the state of the art treatment plant that's just unbelievable and, and works great. And we have a great bunch of people there that are dedicated to, to make sure you, that not the end of this water is great. Um, well, what, what we really want to do is kind of look at what the lake shore is and some of the, what the tributaries that come in and what are the issues. And no matter what um, you do, you're never going to get everything perfect from a watershed such as this. But one of the things that you have going for you is that really, if there is any pollution that's coming in, it's coming from natural sources and it's coming from the, the, the people sources or whatever Julie called it in there. I'm not sure what that word means, but uh, the presentation from the people, it's really from agricultural, recreation, and, and residential. So we're really lucky that the, the lake is very, the watershed of the lake is, is protected and there isn't a lot of commercial, there's not a lot of industrial in, in the lake. So what you're always trying to do is reduce those things that 
and, and a lot of things you can't. Like, for instance, a lot of the animal waste and things that get, get in there, you, you really can't. I mean, you, you have the geese, you have a um, lot of, one of But one of the things that's always a good thing to us in the water department is that the, the lake has a lot of fish. They have a lot of wildlife. We have eagles. You see pictures, if you saw it in the presentation, the pictures of the eagles are there. That's, that's, a, that's a representative of a very healthy lake. And what, are, what we're trying to do with the lake study group is make sure it stays that way and reduce the cost. A anything that's in that lake and comes out of the lake, we have to treat, we have to take care of. And, and that increases the cost of, of treatment. For instance, uh, you'll see in, in the presentation here real quick, there were two years uh, in, the, in, the, in the last five or six where we had uh, large algae blooms in there. And, that, and that's a... That's a uh, um, you know, result of a lot of uh, nutrients uh, getting in, phosphorus and, 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 and nitrogen getting into the lake and, ca and causing these things. And um, we can treat that. that. That's very easy for us to treat, and we treated it both with copper sulfate. But what it does is if we, it, it, it causes more of the, pr the treatment plant to have to, to work a little harder and it costs a lot more. So there's, there are about uh, eight or nine, I think, Peter, ten, uh, ten tributaries, eight. I think. Eight. There's eight tributaries that we, we monitor. So we monitor both the lake and around the whole lake. And the reason why we monitor is so that we can get our treatment system right. right? We have to know what's going in so we can balance the treatment plant. Uh, and it's a filtration plant. It's, it has ozone for disinfectant and a very sophisticated plant. And uh, so we need to keep tweaking it. And that's the basic reason of it. But the other part of this is that because of some, with some of the tributaries, we get kind of a snapshot of what's coming in di at different times from the tributaries. And it comes down to basically this three, all right? And those are the um, uh, Apple Brook, which is over on the, I guess, northwest side of the lake, Peter, north, northeast side of the lake. Right. And then as you come along, there's, there's two other tributaries, one one that's known as Foamy Brook, and the other one that's the Country Club Brook. <laughs> and those come through the Country Club, but they're not just the Country Club. Now, the one that I mentioned, the Apple, and, and, and if you look in the presentation here, that if you have that uh, um, a hard copy, there's a map in there that shows the tributary areas to those three uh, brooks. And it, I, like I said, there's five others that, that, that we didn't see any problem. In the bump that we saw, we always have a problem with Foamy Brook, but um, the other two went up in, in 2015. And so we, we've been a little concerned about that, uh, the group, the study group. And um, we've, we've actually talked to some of the property owners up in those areas to see if anything changed, if they did anything a little different. Um, we haven't been able to really nail anything down yet. Um, the country club is, is, is you know, right in with us on this. They're they're uh, a partner almost in this. They they're trying to clean up their lake shore, and they also have been starting to sample on their property. And as we get into um, the, this next this period, which we're in now, and we and we sample, we're gonna we're gonna get them to sample their their property, and we're we're gonna compare that. So, a lot of the things that in the two of the years that. We had the problems uh, with the lake. One of them was 2012, and every, anybody that was here in 2012 remember um, uh, Stevens Pond going green, and we had to close it down. Okay, that was a really unusual year. We didn't have we didn't have a very cold winter. We had actually a very warm weather winter. You know, I don't think the lakes and the in the ponds really recharged as well as as they as they could have. We didn't have a lot of water, and. Uh, so we, we had a lot of problems in 2012. We also had to treat the lake. So we treated the, we treat, you know, we had to treat the lake that time with, with copper sulfate. Not, and when I say we treat the lake, we don't go through and treat the whole thing. There's usually parts of it that we monitor and see where that, that green al the algae is and we, and we treat in those areas and, and we usually get it. Uh, the, the, the Stevens Pond doesn't have any problem anymore because we went through the whole study of that and twenty thousand dollars a year I spend on making sure that 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 doesn't go green we do a lot of work there and uh, we you know we we have we, we pull out the weeds we did that if anybody went by a uh, la couple of weeks ago we were pulling out the weeds and tomorrow we're doing the alum to, to treat the uh, thing so that, that that's all good um, so my, my point of all this is there's a lot of 
really good things that are going, but we want to we want to make sure we focus on some some other things. And some of the things that Peter has been focusing us on and in, in, in going around is really the boat storage. And the reason why the boat storage becomes very important to us is when people leave the boats around the edges of the lake, what happens is erosion occurs. Well, when erosion occurs, that's your natural treatment system. It's gone. So now the nutrients and, and you know phosphorus and everything that goes right you know, everything goes right into the lake. So it's very important that we start thinking about how we handle the boats around the lake and, and eliminating this storage on the ground. And uh, part of the presentation, I kept kind of quiet when the when uh, Wood and Karen was doing that. But our our goal is uh, to have uh, boat storage on, on on that property where, the, where that is. And uh, what we'd like to do is start looking at eliminating on the ground and have uh, boat storage in racks at two locations, and this was part of the presentation that uh, we gave to the selectmen. One of them is over near the hatch, and the other one is going to be at the North Pumping Station. In the way you could access, we want to try to eliminate particularly the boat storage along 133. And if you can't see it from the road, but what Peter pointed it out to all of us is how much of the boat storage there is along that 133. And then the other, the other place is, of course, over on uh, Pleasant Street, right where, you come, where the lake gets real close. And we want to try to eliminate that. But we don't, we can't, we don't want to, we want to eliminate, but we also don't want to stop recreation use of, of the lake. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to try to expand the parking lot um, right there near Pleasant Street that, that people use to get to Weir, Weir Hill. We think we can expand that. And again, uh, uh, Jennifer's on board with that. She's going to, you know, do the wetlands for us, and we're going to figure out how to, how to I mean, it's not going to be paved or anything. We're just going to open it up so we can park a few more people there so people can get to the, to the, the boat storage at, at the ramp, uh, at the uh, hatch. Uh, the other thing we want to do, we want to certainly allow people to put their boats in on Pleasant Street because it's pretty easy there. So we're going to kind of fix that up a little bit so it's easy to get in. We've added some barrels. The other thing that we have a, a, a terrible time with is, is people leaving trash behind. You know, we, we've got the signs up. We, we have, we're putting more and more barrels in, and we're trying to get people to understand that that's a major issue around there because it's just, and, and last year we organized uh, a great clean pick with some of the people in this room were there to do that. So those are the type of things. So what happens up in, 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 the, in the watershed, which is what your concern is? And I, I think that um, we, what we need to do is we need to probably re-educate people. And I think that's what this board can really be, uh, you know, a big plus. Um, you, you really have the, have the um, enforcement, if, if you want to use that, it's not really enforcement, but that's, it's really, I don't have it. Because what, what DPW basically does is they're, they're, they're concerned with, with making the water, water clean and getting the water to, to the people. And I think, and, I, and I'm not suggesting that any regulations change. I don't think that needs to be done. I think that what needs to be done is people need to be educated on what the issues are and, and get something out and, and, and make people understand. We're, we're starting to bring some of the major people in. We've talked to the small acts that have a big piece of, of, one, of one of the properties. We've talked to the, to the, um, to the, to the people at, um, uh, at, the, at the country club. We've, we've, we've talked to um, the, other, the other big properties around the lake. And they're they're in on this, and, and and I think that's one of the things that we need to do. And, and and Peter's done a lot to focus us on what needs to be cleaned up. We've got nine docks, de derelict docks pulled out of it. So th those type of things. Um, so Peter, I would just, if I could elaborate that a little bit, if if we had the presentation, you would see two graphs. Right. Um, one of the graphs shows the phosphate levels. The other shows the nitrogen, and. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is an example of the phosphate. And what it shows is eight tributaries and what the testing results were. And you can see that they're stable over four years for all eight tributaries. And that means that it's steady state. And then last year, three of the tributaries went up. And that's for both phosphates and nitrogen in three areas around the lake. And all three areas are on the east side of the lake um, in three of the tributaries uh, by the country club and then north of that. And that part of the watershed goes way back into development uh, neighborhoods. Um, and so the notion here is that as this testing is done, if you have an example where the testing is high, 
This is part of monitoring, and you inquire as to why it's high. And that's what Bruce is saying. Have already spoken with the institutional landowners there. Um, and I think that feedback loop is important to say, hey, here's results we have. It's a little high this year. Why is that? Have you changed your practice? And if so, what did you do? And I think over the long term, it's also useful for the planning board to have these test results because it gets to what is happening in the watershed. Um, the 1987 report that led to the watershed regulations, this one, says that if you lined up four glasses of water that you drew from the tap, three of those four glasses of water would have come from the watershed, drained from the land into the lake. And the fourth glass is rainfall falling directly into the lake. So the condition of the watershed and how that affects the water draining into the lake has a direct impact on the quality of the water in the lake. And then, of course, it's treated to the highest standards for the water that we actually drink. But that's the feedback loop for the planning board. How are the watershed rules doing in terms of protecting the lake? And here we have results over a fairly short period of time of just five years that show, hey, it's been stable, except for three of the eight tributaries over the last year. And that deserves some further inquiry mm -hmm. in those areas. What's changed? What's happening? Why did those tests go up? And what do we have to do to get them back down? Just a point about the phosphates, and I don't know if you can get, if this would be helpful in your research as to why it went up, but I have a pool in my backyard, and last year I could not get the chemicals stable, and I, if the testing showed that the phosphates were sky high in my pool, and this year I had the same, and so for only two years out of the last seven that have had this, eight, nine that have had this issue, mm -hmm. and they said that it's due to something, the rain is taking something off the leaf in my, like the trees have grown more in my backyard and something. So anyway, just might be some anecdotal yeah. interesting. Right. I can get something from the weather service or some other something that might explain the phosphates, but that's just kind of coincidental that right. I had the same thing in my pool as is evidenced in the lake. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. And the reason Very that the nitrogen and phosphate is a concern if they spike is because that can contribute to the conditions that could lead to an algae bloom. Yeah, the cyanobacteria. Yeah. Yep. Bruce, you, you talked about the small X being... That's only one of, in, yeah. in a... But yeah. I didn't real, realize that their farm was in the... Oh, yeah. The, the tributary to this Apple Brook is enormous. Apple Brook comes in off of... Uh, if you, you think about going along uh, Great Pond Road and you get to where... Um, uh, Winter Street's supposed to come down, but it doesn't. It's it's a dead end on and there's a pond right there, and there's a pump station. Yeah. Well, that's the that brook. That is the. That uh, sort of that's oh, that's okay. that, and that drains. It, it's amazing. When we did it, we thought that the Country Club Brook went up to this area. For instance, up to Dale Street, it, it doesn't t quite touch Dale Street. This that area that I'm just talking about mm -hmm. is all the way along uh, Dale Street, along where the farm is, where the where town farm is, and then comes all the way down through there. It's an enormous area. She's fine. So you say they are, Bruce, are you saying that the, um, that the town farm, at the very edge of the town farm, uh, sort of on the small act side going that way, mm -hmm. I've heard that that is like the head end of one of the key tributaries. Is that part of that apple? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, I, yeah. I live and then the other two are just below that towards the lake. If I'm, I'm talking about below, it's just below that. So there's like that's like a big anemone that goes like this, and so the other two kind of come down this way. Stuff is against yeah. Now, yeah. I live in Mead House Commons, which is part of the small lake complex. It is, but I most of that's out of the watershed. Well, you know, yeah, a Mead little bit. It's expanded. Yeah. The air, the whole area of his yeah. farm. Going, he goes up to that big yeah. hill. But he used an awful lot of natural, uh, yeah, natural stuff as well does. too. So, but uh, I mean, the, the whole thing has opened up. Yep. And he's got more animals there, mm -hmm. a lot more yep. geese. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean that, that's one of the things we've talked to him about it. We're going to have further discussions about. It. I right. want to do more. I want to do some more uh, sampling. But the, the, the I've got one year, and I want to see what happens this year. I'm sure. Yeah, the, uh, the point that I think Pete's making is when you have numbers and you have trends, you can 
yeah. diagnose things and right. take prescriptive action, and that's that's yeah. the key thing. So I, I, I wouldn't down. I, I really want to don't want to dump. I, I really hope that the board and and, I, and I'll make a this the, this the Lake Study Group will help put would help with whatever. You, can we formalize can that up. and get the selectmen's approval to give them some authority and maybe make it you know Look, a little more. I, I don't know why you I don't know if you you need to give the selectmen authority. Well, I, I think, I, you guys I think have. that the committee should actually have a formal. The lake is so important. I think it should have a formal charter. Basically, it should be a formal group. You know, it's not instead of have it make it permanent. Well, you, you can, know. but you you imply that they might have a quasi police power, and that's I yeah, think I, it might be. I think uh, we leave that to the to the groups that are already yeah. have it. I think I think this is this is an advisory group that. that you know, we we all need to continue to do, and I think it's a. I, I think we're doing good good work. I, I, I think. We're, yeah. Well, let, let's say I'm really uh, impressed and encouraged by, you know, the, the head of DPW, the you know head of planning, the head of conservation are all participating in a very collaborative way towards what's going on and what can be done. And I and I'm, you know, I'm the volunteer on this, but it's very impressive. Uh, they're the ones calling the meetings and, you know, going before the selectmen, and, and that's great. Having said that, I would also observe, I've been doing research with documents like this and others that have to do with the lake, and, you know, maybe a total of 20 documents of all different sorts. And one of them includes the series of master plans for the town, going back to the 50s. Yeah. And every master plan has a statement that given the importance of the lake, it's notable that there's no entity in charge of managing it. There's more than one, and maybe that's good because you actually need more than one specialty, but there is no one entity that feels like, oh, we gotta make sure we're doing this, although I will say that really Bruce has, you know, along with Jennifer and Jean, really brought this group together. Can I just add one thing for the radar? Maybe it's already on it, but it's just very coincidental. I'm on a Facebook group for North End of Moms, and there was a huge you. dialogue today about the dogs, dogs swimming in the lake and the fact that absolutely no one seems to follow the sign postings of Oh, the end of the dog park posted. And they're part of the discussion was they didn't know who to call. Yeah, yeah. Like, people were like, call them. Phil to close your up. Call this person, call this person. Yeah. Yeah, and our dog park group was uh, telling people to go swimming at Wire Hill, and I had to shut that down. You know, and that was a that was a different one. Yeah, this exactly. No, I know, but today. yeah, but yes, I know. It, I saw it, that one too. I mean, it just it literally, there. so many people disregard that sign. Like the majority of people disregard which the is, signs. Like, which how is can why we enforce I believe. What I, I, think I have a picture that. from Peter from last weekend. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he shared it with everybody, but it's, it's really that's the sign of saying no dogs at the beach in Rice Point. With with adults and dogs. No, I I have alerted. Here's a couple of things that are going on with that. Just so you know, we we we, we partner with both the um, uh, the other partner in this, and that we get them involved is also the trustees okay, of the reservation, yeah. mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, Kevin Block, who's the head of that, is is great, and he's he's very into this whole thing. We've had meetings with what is known as the town manager, uh, Mark, this is the poop group, uh, that looks at trying to, uh, you know, focus on this and get, and get enforcement done. We do have the bikes going up through Wire Hill now. They'll start going up through there. Talk to uh, to uh, the soon-to-be chief, um, uh, Gray, um, about that and about um, coming by on weekends and making sure that um, that the that the beach gets gets monitored. We also are extended. There's another thing we need to extend the. Uh, we're going to extend the, the fence along there, as well you know, along that side, so to, to keep it out. But I, I you know we did a lot on that that group that I just mentioned um, by uh, doing a lot of uh, yeah. outreach in in, yeah. in public education. I don't think people realize what what it what it does. You know, I, but I, I really at some think. point though. <clears throat> Outreach is fine, but at some point, everybody knows that they can bring their dogs swimming there. And there's, if there's, if it only, if they're only told that there's never ever a ticket ever issued. Yeah. It, it, at some point, there's, there's, they're not, it's not going to stop. People have been swimming their dogs in there for 20 years now. Yeah, I, I think if we did a Freedom of Information Act on the police department ACO, they probably never gave someone a single ticket yeah. for swimming in the lake. 
not you one. Know, you know, but I, I, they, I mean, they they have been out, out there enforcing. No, I know. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's enforcing and telling them. Eventually, if you tell, if you give three or four tickets out after the second or third time, they know that they notice the same person. That word will get out, and then that will probably stop it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans to go back up the tributary and do samples to see? Yeah, we're thinking about doing that. We're asking some of the people to do it, actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that's the only way you're going to go up into it a little bit and hit pick some things. Blind. Yeah, I have um, ne next uh, Monday we have a new um, water analyst that's starting. And she's very interested in, in this okay. thing, and she's going to be part of our group, and, and we're going to be able to start doing that. In the summer, we have the intern in there, so we can do some of that. Yeah. We have a new lab director that started last week. So, uh, what yeah, can we so some things we're going to be able to get out and get some labor and do that. What can we do about cross connections and septic systems? I think those, I think, in other uh, reports. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Cross connection that. problems and septic system problems, failures, I think that's usually reported as one of the number one causes of well, one the, well, one thing that's good about around the lake, and I'm not saying every every septic system has been eliminated from the from the watershed, but an awful lot of septic systems. That's one of the things that that why I said earlier, uh, we, we don't really have an issue with 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 that that type of pollution in the lake because they went around and, and, and sewered back in the 80s. A tremendous yeah, I was going to say. Water I don't think that's, that's, it's very yeah. weird what's left. If, if there's anything, it's it's way up in 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 the in the watershed somewhere, yeah. uh, you know, along Dale Street or something like that. I yeah. Mean, yeah. But that that's not really uh, one of our major issues here. The main, the main, like I said, the major issue here is 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 recreation. You know, people's lawns. You know, making sure you know people aren't going to let those those go green. You know, and uh, I mean go go uh, brown. You know, they're going to take care of. Them. So I mean, those are the things that really need to. We have in the deed. Uh, it says you have to use you know slow release, but um, you know, is there an opportunity somehow to go back to property owners uh, where there are deed restrictions and say these are your deed restrictions? Or some type of handbook, or I think or you got to Pete. You got to find out where it's happening, you know, and then you can. Well, we, we've already narrowed it down in this case to a very small percentage of the entire watershed. I don't know that you're ever going to narrow it to a single property. Well, no, would we but you can go to further no, up to see no. where it gets heavier. I, I think the solution to that, Peter, is we take the informational mailer that we did to everybody in the watershed. Maybe we can. This is a pretty nice map. I think I could probably overlay it if someone else couldn't onto the watershed mailing list and then do a targeted one and say, this is why we've been doing this is because there is a spike. Because right now we just told them, hey, we're protecting it. Right. Now we're going to tell them, yeah. this is why we've taken these steps because we have seen a trend in this from in this, this area. area. I think that's yeah. a good way to you do know, it. And target that area. Well, in terms and then of now, educational, yeah. I think that could be and effective. I think, and I think that's the most effective yeah. way to hit it's those It's an example of say, what do you do with the data? Well, I think yeah. the first step is you inform yeah. and educate, and that could yeah. be a way and to I, do I, it. I think that go a long way, to, particularly with the planning board's yeah. role is in the, in the water yeah. shy. And, yeah. and they don't have to have a deed restriction according to the bylaw to restrict. Right. I mean, that's, right. We, we make, we, we remind do, them. Yeah, and we yeah. do one off as yeah. they come through permitting, yeah. right. but there's, there's yeah. many that don't have that. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, if you're realistically, there's a balance of how much you can do because if you came on too strong, you would get some really bad publicity. I don't think you want to do that. I think right. the approach of, Encouraging people's better side is the yeah, is yeah. the way to go. Yeah, I don't know if there's any way, there's you know a social media way to get more access to people in the watershed. You know that you know if, if couldn't hit the wrong person on that. One. Uh, you know again, I mean it's what a is little that? bit. What's the most effective way to get the largest yeah, number of people in the target yeah. audience? Um, but if you show yeah. if you show that thing too much, people are going to say the water's no good to drink. You know, you've got to be I think most people are smart that. enough to realize that we have a water quality report which factually says the water is oh. fine to drink. We're trying right. to lower our cost in treating it. That's, that's, exactly that's, pretty much so that's, yeah, that's a good way to present it. Yes. Yeah. I think that is. Yeah. Yes. But, oh. This will save you money. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this is fantastic. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. Pete, thank you, Bruce. 
thank you for taking this on. I mean, I I feel like we as a board should stay engaged with it. So I, I, I know we have always had it on the agenda. We haven't always discussed it, but I'd like to keep it going. I mean, I, I for one, would like to drill down into the report a little bit to understand it better. And I may go wander around and, you know, because I, I, I live right there. So I know kind of what some of the stuff is. But, you know, I just might pay more attention to certain things. One, one thing I forgot is um, we're going to get some of the more or the the data that went into those points. We're actually going to ask uh, Lisa to help us out with. Yeah. Right. So, so we sent it, and she's asked for a little bit more information to, to try to. So we're getting a little bit more. So she's willing to help as well. And then we can yeah. get comments back for the board from yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Can we get um? You have the three watersheds which are high. Can we get maps of the other watersheds just for information? Are they out there? Uh, we could develop, I think Jennifer developed that. I, okay, I mean, so it hasn't been developed yet. No, but no, we just, that's because of those, Jennifer, that's a program that Jennifer got through DEP. Okay, that was, so we don't have mm. it yet. Okay, but we could. Okay. But I don't want to, if, if, as they come out, don't, you know, yeah. that, okay. I think we did. that's interesting to know where they are. There are other large no, watersheds that really go into yeah. that. It just oh, happens yeah. at those. And, uh, because it's and Jean, I have that image the fire, where it highlights the watershed and Raise out the here. other stuff. Yeah. I have that. I can send to you if you need a granny alert. I think we can do another targeted mailer of Lake Shore. Residents. No, but I'm saying for like reports and stuff because it grays oh, out okay. everybody yeah. who's not in it because that yellow line isn't that great in the yeah. one that. But I think um, getting to the next level is tributary direct yeah. abutters and yeah. yes. shoreline direct abutters because yeah. we know they are going to be within yeah. the 400 foot yeah. or the 325 foot. Yeah. And maybe there we could use the language that. You, you have in terms of, you know, this is to reduce our cost, the water is treated, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also maybe a little more information on what is meant by, yeah. you know, slow release, natural, yeah. where do you get it, that kind of stuff. I, I was asking, this you is mentioned a good the point. landscaping companies that service North Andover, I mean, there's yeah. you know, 20 popular ones or whatever, and said, that's, that's a great can, idea, can you, actually, is give them you know, an You should only be using X on land that is near the lake. And I that. think that's a great idea, especially if we consider about a year and a half ago, we had that clear cutting on the property next to Brook School, and the landscaper came in before the board and said, gee, I didn't know. Mm. Yeah, and, um, can we send something directly yeah. to them? I think, I, I don't know if that's possible, but. I, I think that would be a, a real I, multiplier. Yeah, yeah we could. I, I don't know them all. I, mean, I just know. I just know the ones that plow for me. <laughs> I mean, a, a simple Google can pull them up. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah well, but we, we could get some. We could drag down on twenty-five. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. a good idea. Yeah. yeah, they should be included in the middle list. And if, right, whenever right, we do these, that's right. Yeah. They, any, They're anyone. the providers. Yeah. You know, we can talk to someone. We can talk to Chris. We can talk to Tyler and uh, and the others and uh, and, and we'll Peter. Get them in the boat yeah. of helping yeah. to propagate yeah. the good stuff. Yeah. Well, along <laughs> those lines, I was also going to offer. You said you might go walk around and uh, you know the, oh, the trip on go. the canoe is. All oh, the, the trip on the canoe. That the would be awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I've I've decided I'm not sure about it. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> I've seen the, the the whole thing. Kevin Kevin went out. Yeah. For the TTOR shoreline. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, the general manager in the golf club has agreed to come out in the canoe yeah. next week. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. to talk a little bit more about the, yeah. the golf balls and things, yeah. which is good. Yeah. yeah. They, like I said, they've been part of it and they're, they're working on it, and uh, the others have too. So that's good. Yeah. And I, 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 you won't believe it when you see the boat and a couple of pictures of the docks that he pulled over to the treatment plant that we pulled out over there. Yeah. Yeah. One of them, they couldn't believe it, the 20-footer there, without a motor. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Bruce, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. No problem. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. We have one housekeeping item that's not on the agenda uh, per request of an applicant. Um, we wanted to update our Registry of Deeds authorization, so we just need to make a motion to continue to have Gene, the Assistant Director of Community Development, sign all plans on behalf of the board to be filed with the Registry of Deeds and Land Courts. And then I have a paper that if you could all sign after you make the motion. I'm just curious, why do we have to continue it? Um, they, they, there's an applicant that needs to file within Land Court, uh -huh. and Land Court has asked for an updated Okay, Land Court. Okay. So, yes, it's, it's on the Land Court side of it. Have so, to do it so would somebody <laughs> like to make that motion? So moved. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll sign it. Anything else? Um, no, minutes. just a minute. Good. Well, actually, the Planning Board rules and regulations, I think we should amend that the Planning Board 
the bylaws, and I think we should actually get Eric in here and say what's the process to have the codification done. And the well, they are the planning board rules and regulations. Oh, yeah, well, rules. Rule, yeah. Oh, I'm just That's the official name. Yeah. Is it rules and regulations or yeah. bylaws? No, rules and regulations. Okay. Uh, okay. Is that and see when he's going to do the RFP? Put it out a bit to get for it out. the rules and regulations? Yeah. Well, we should definitely talk to him because I don't want to have a uh, runaway uh, thing because yeah. we have to. We should spend a little bit of time going through them and deciding what we like and what we don't yeah. like, or what, what we don't care about, yeah. and what the timeline is, and everything. Because it needs to get done. Yeah. That and that was something started previously. I don't believe it started yet. I don't think the RFP has gone out yet, and you know what the process is going to be. Are we going to, you know, re review the people? Are you talking okay. for recodification of the bylaw and the update yes. to the master plan? Yes. And the master plan separate. I believe that the new plan was with. Um, well, I mean, the master plan budget. process yes. is it tangentially related to rules and regulations, but it's. Like master plans like this and rules and regulations yeah, yeah. are like this. Yeah. Uh, so have I you guys review, reviewed the rules and regulations prior to this? Yeah, or? I just don't. I mean, if 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 his idea is if you're going to have somebody do the master plan, they're not going to do your rules and regulations. So yeah, he may not be scoping the rules and regulations. Can you talk to him? We can ask for an update. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. We just I'll need make a, a motion to approve oh. the May 17, 2016 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.